Hello, the live stream is gonna start very soon. But before that big mouth starts talking, I wanna tell you about the secret art of game mastery. That's the next DM layer Kickstarter. Listen, game masters are the heart of all tabletop games because frankly, without you, there would be no game. Your players would just sit there and stare at each other and, and no one would know what to do. And yet, game mastering can often be challenging and overwhelming. I know, I tried it. I, I'm, I'm still dealing with the trauma from that experience. But anyway, that's why the DM Lair team has taken their accumulated experience as game masters in a plethora of game systems over 100 years of combined experience that's that's a lot of finger counting and, and put it all into one book the secret art of game mastery whether you're a seasoned game master or a brand new one we want to help you run amazing games for your players and in this book we'll guide you in the secret art of game mastery. Trust, trust me, it's super, super secret. These are the things that you often don't find in other game master guides. Oh, and everything in this book is system agnostic. Th that's a big word that means the information will work for any game system you want to run, be it Pathfinder, D&D, Call of Cthulhu, Shadowrun, Savage Worlds, or, or, or something else. The Secret Art of Game Mastery Kickstarter launches in August, but if you click the link below, you can follow the project and get notified when it goes live. So yeah, yeah, do that right now. Uh, you know, clicky clicky. All right, here we go. Stream has begun. Let me play some D&D. You guys ready? Absolutely. All right, sweet. Well, uh, for our viewers here, we have assembled here several of my patrons. And we're going to be playing a one shot tonight. It is adapted from an adventure I wrote called A Drought of Thorns. Now, this adventure is going to be coming out next month for DM Layer patrons. It'll be at the $25 tier um, written by me. And actually going forward, all of those adventures at the $25 tier will be written for me and by me. And then the month before they come out, my patrons, um, selected patrons, will get to play in a one shot of that adventure. Now, the adventure is, and for you guys too who are playing, the adventure is a quite a bit longer than what we're doing tonight. I had to figure out ways to make it shorter so that it'll fit into a four hour block. Um, and it probably will still, we might go over, but I did my best. So, anyway, that's what we are playing tonight. So, we're going to jump right in and we're going to start doing it. Um, by the way, for viewers, we are doing the boons and banes thing where you can do super chats to get. Oh, I, I don't I don't know if you guys even know about this, but the viewers can do super chats that help you guys or they can help me. So basically, the, I'll I'll just go over how this works really quick. I don't know. Uh, this is either going to be really good for you or really bad for you guys. So because if they send a boon. It can give you guys inspiration. It can give you healing potions, a pool of healing potions. It can even give you magic items. So the boons can be really, really good for you and super helpful for you. However, the banes can give inspiration for me so that I can reroll something. It can um, give me healing, a healing pool that my bad guys can use. And it can also clone monsters. So there could be more monsters that you have to fight and it can take away your magic items as well. So there's good things and bad things um, that viewers might be able to do here. I know when we were doing our Pathfinder 2 one shot like a week or so ago, there were lots of boons coming in, but also banes. Like there was one dude that just kept on throwing banes. So hopefully, hopefully you guys fare better tonight because that got rough. Those guys, they, they didn't make it. They didn't make it. Yes, this is a squishy party. Somebody in chat was like, it's a squishy party. We have a warlock, a moon druid. Now, is the moon druid, um, is that the one that shape changes a lot? It is. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, sweet. So you got that. And then we have a bard. Now, are you, what kind of bard are you? I uh, ended up picking up a uh, lore. A lore bard. bard. Okay, it's okay. And then cleric. Uh, are you like the heavy armor cleric or or not? Uh, it's gonna be scale mail. Scale mail. So Is that medium? it's not the heavy. It's medium. I think it's medium. Yeah. Okay. Light okay. Cleric. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. I mean, who's the frontliner in this group? 
<laughs> it was like the hand raise was like this. Uh... <laughs> Sweet. Okay, cool. I'm going to kick this party off. I'll be I'll read the opening scenario. Now, you guys in the game, this a lot of this is what I already posted in the chat ahead of time in our Discord. So you guys are probably already know this, but I'm reading this mostly for our viewers here. Um so that they're aware of what's going on here. All right. The area, <clears throat> the area southwest of Windvale has been overrun with cruel fae who have stripped bare all vegetation in the area and slaughtered or scattered the inhabitants of farms and hunting lodges. Aided by dire fae magic, the area has begun a transformation into a wasteland. Sandy winds whip what little vegetation remains and thorny growths have begun to cover all. Furthermore, no word has been heard from the West Tower, a guard tower west of Windvale, and rumor is that it has fallen. My cat has joined us. Thus, Marshall Ironsky of Windvale has tasked your adventuring party with traveling to the West Tower and getting to the bottom of matters. She tells you that there is another rumor on the wind, one that speaks of a creature known as the Thorn, who might be behind everything. Iron Sky requests that you find this thorn and put an end to it before all of Windvale is nothing but a barren wasteland. All right, and now I'd like to go around and have you guys introduce your characters so everybody knows who comprises the adventuring party. Dulner, you're up first. My name is Dulner. I am a hill dwarf light cleric. I worship. Helm, the light god. I was a sailor back in the day when Helm saved our boat with a beam of light, guiding, guiding us back home. From that day forward, I worshipped Helm, and I'm out adventuring to to recover any artifacts that Helm would like back, and of course, get some gold for myself. Of course. My my scale mail is very shiny, and everything just reflects light everywhere. Excellent. Yaslin. I'm playing Yaslin. She's a wood elf moon druid. She just wants to protect the earth and those who can't protect themselves, and she's just out helping people that she can. Beautiful. Umlaut. Uh... Umlaut, I'm playing a bard, uh, coming from a long family of uh, war bards. I decided to go out and learn more about different cultures uh, instead of following in my family's footsteps. Uh, the you, You'll see, I usually have a drum with me, just kind of tapping it along to as I'm moving around the different different areas and different places. Awesome. Yesrig. Um, Jesrig is a draw woman from a noble family. But she, because she couldn't serve love, she left the Underdark after striking a path with the Black Goat of the Woods with a thousand young. So now she's going around the world as a warlock. Excellent. And so you guys in Windvale have set out to find this West Tower to see if the rumors are true, if it has fallen or if it still stands, because the area is turning slowly from a very prosperous area to one filled with barren wasteland, sand and thorns. And as you travel, you can finally see the reports of the West Tower having fallen are true. Before you lay the crumbled ruins of what once was a proud fortification that must have reached several stories into the... My cat is rubbing against my monitor. <laughs> this is moving it. A proud fortification that must have reached several stories into the air. Now all that remains is a massive pile of crumbled stones and wooden beams. The West Tower is no more. 
but there was mention of an underground fortification below the tower itself. Perhaps it remains intact. Perhaps there are survivors holed up there that might shed light on what happened. And as you scrounge around through the beams and the rubble, you do find indeed a staircase leading downward. Rubble and large splinters of wood cover the stone staircase as you descend. It spirals downward clockwise for some 30 feet before opening to a hallway that stretches north and south. And I am moving you to a new map. Belnar, before we go down, would like to ritual cast Detect Magic before we head down the stairs. Okay, the last 10 minutes and you're concentrating on that? Yep. All right, put a red token, red marker on your token, please, to indicate that. And I'm going to reveal some of the map for you all. Where's my lighting? Where? Fog of War. There we yeah, go. I can't see. I yeah, I know. I'm trying to reveal areas. Okay. Give me a hot second. It's all good. All right, there we go. You can at least see around your tokens. All right. And then I just revealed um, the hallway leading north and south as well. Any noises down here? Do you listen around? It's mostly quiet where you're currently standing. You're just at the bottom of the staircase. Do I see anything glowing magically? You do not. Not from where you're standing. You're at the bottom of the staircase. Your visibility is very limited. Like, you can literally see, like, across the area right here. If you step out into the hallway, you're going to have a much better view of what's north and south. Is it lit in any way? There is no lighting down here. There is There is lighting coming down the shaft of the staircase where you guys are currently standing. But beyond that, you don't see any light spilling out from light sources at all. So it's pretty dark down here. I look around and I'll cast dancing light. So I'll have three globes of light coming up so we can see a little bit better. Okay. This is, I'm looking at your guys' races and it looks like you all should have dark vision, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I will before <clears throat> stepping into the hall, I will uh take a look around and see if I see traps or anything unusual in the stonework. Okay. Give me a perception check as you look around. A fifteen. A fifteen. Uh, you look around and you don't see any traps or anything directly in front of the staircase. There's a bunch of debris and stuff lying around. So obviously, the first thing we should do is split up. No. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing any party does. So. Half go north oh. and half go south because it'll take less time that way, right? <laughs> that's right. Does anybody yeah. any, have any psychic connections? Um, I will st I'll step out in the hallway. Okay. As you move out into the hallway, you can see debris and splatters of blood, presumably from battle, are scattered about this otherwise unremarkable hallway that stretches north and south. In both directions lie short staircases that descend perhaps 10 feet to lower areas of the compound. Okay, I'm going to follow out after him kind of slowly just peeking around seeing if there's anything south of where we are right now you said that there was blood is it going in any direction um as you step out once you're in the hallway and get a better idea of what's going on please give me a perception check as you look at the okay. blood uh that was a nat 20. so perception 21. 
Okay. So there's blood splatters all about the place. And it doesn't seem like there's any particular direction that it's heading, like something was being dragged or anything like that. Um, and the blood is mostly dried at this point. Some of it's rather dark and has a red, dark red hue to it. But some of the other blood is not of the same hue. It looks to be have have been come from a different sort of creature. Well, the blood looks like it's going south. Or the blood is all over the place like with no the place. with no clear direction of where it's going. At the end of the hall, I see some sort of flame. Is that north or south? North. All you see down there is a statue of a wizard holding a rod at the end of the hallway, and there's also okay. it looks like the hallway goes left and right as well, and then at the very south, the hallway also goes left and right. I'll look back to go. Do we want to go north or south? Do we want to split up? Two go one way, two go oh. the, just kidding. I should mention as well that there, right, right across run. from you, there is a door yep. that you can see. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I forgot to reveal that. Uh, I'll comma. go up to the door and listen. But okay. I'll, I'll, I'll touch myself and guide myself before I listen. I say, okay. help me. Do I have perception? Now, as you go up to the door, you do oh. notice that the door is made from hardwood reinforced with steel. So this was a fortification. So these doors are going to be very sturdy, which very is going to make sturdy. listening through them much more difficult. Just so you're aware. Go yeah. ahead. Please make your perception check. Thirteen. Thirteen. You don't hear anything through the door. I'll send a ghostly hand, and I'll try to push the door open. Okay, so you, mage hand. you're casting Mage Hand? All right, yeah. you cast Mage Hand, and it pushes against the door, and the door does not move. Yasling, what are you doing? Hmm... I'll go check out the door, see if I can figure out anything from it that might help. Okay, what are you looking for? Is there any, like, door handle or a way to open it yes. or a lock? Yep, there's a latch. It turn like that on both of the doors. It's a set of double doors. Um, there is a locking mechanism on it as well, like a keyhole. Is the door currently locked? So... Do you wish to ascertain that by trying to turn a handle? Yes. Okay, so you reach out and grab one of the handles and just slowly turn it a little bit, and it looks like it's going to keep going. It does not appear to be locked. I'll turn to the group. Y'all want to try to go in here? Let's go for it. Let's do it. Absolutely. I'll go ahead and finish or trying to like open the door. Okay, so you open one of the doors. Uh, look, as mm -hmm. as soon as she opens the door, I'll send the three globes of light into the room. Okay, could you draw three little like circles on the map, and then you can move those globes around wherever you happen to have the light. Okay, I'll just draw one because they all walk together. Okay. And I'm going to reveal this, and I'll give you a description of what you see beyond. So, in this room, <clears throat> it's a massive room. It appears to be an alchemical lab of sorts. Counters run along the walls, and tables stand through the middle of the area, all covered with flasks, beakers, racks of pipettes, alembrics, and other assorted equipment. However, one table to the north is a blackened mess, and it appears to be the site of a major alchemical explosion. There is a large trunk squatting in the southeast corner of the room, and several curious creatures are at work in the room. Stand by.
they're busy at work around two of the central tables. Oh, so that, oops. That guy should actually be right there. They wear, they stand between two and four feet tall, and they wear scraps of rusted armor and have long hooked noses, spindly limbs, and dry, cracked, dusky gray skin. As the door opens and you send your light flowing into the room, the three of them turn towards you, squinting at the light. Ah! Bright light! One of them squints and says, Who are you? What do you want? Oh, just just be cool, guys. Just be cool. It's okay. We're 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 just uh we're just looking around. Looking around, you look like oath breakers. <laughs> You're too late. Never never heard of oath breakers. Who's who's an oath breaker? You are. You all broke your oaths. Now you're too late. You might as well just leave. What's been established and grown cannot be stopped now. Close the door on your way out, thank you. Well, maybe we can help each other really quickly. Like, you know, I, I'm, I don't know who these Oathbreakers are. I, I've never heard of them. Can you tell me about them a little bit? Why should we tell you about what you are ignorant of? Well, We're busy. Important bus things to do here. Bus busy? Busy with what? Working, working here in our lab, of course. You definitely look very, very busy. Um, what what happened over there on on the table above you? It looked like you had some type of accident. Um, just uh, that was like that when we got here. And the other two they're are not really nodding. good at what they're doing. I'll just say they're they're not that good at what they're doing. Mm. Better close the door to avoid their mistakes. Is there anything yeah. glowing in this room? Is there anything glowing in that room? Let us see. No, you don't see anything in plain sight that's not like obscured by anything glowing. But there's like, you know, workbenches, cabinets, trunk and stuff, so. Anything from the trunk inside looks like it's. You, that, the tech magic doesn't go through solid services. It has to be like unobscured or whatever. Unless I'm completely misremembering that spell. One inch of common metal, three feet of wood or door. Oh, does dirt. it? Really? Yeah. All right, stand by. It's all good. How much, how much wood did it say? Uh, three feet of wood, one f inch of common metal, and one foot of stone. Okay. And a thin sheet of lead. Oh, all, all chests <laughs> have lead around them. <laughs> <laughs> um, no magical glowing from inside the chest. Okay. So, one of these creatures comes forward as you guys stand there, grabs the door, and pulls it closed. Go away! Well, they seemed busy. Yeah, they, they seem like they uh they didn't want to be bothered. Should they be here? They, should we be here? Hey, we were we? hired to find people here. Yeah, we Is were this... told to come here. <laughs> Do they look like the people we're looking for? I don't think this uh, this the thorn person is is going to be a bunch of kind of lab workers. I think these are the thorns minions, maybe, but we can worry about that later. Let's continue on then. I don't know. Leaving. I mean. I mean, what about asking them about Thor? It, if they may know where Thor is, <laughs> we couldn't hear them through the door, so it's pretty safe to assume they can't hear us through the door. It's, I don't think they're paying attention to us either. So, 
We can ask them again. I don't think they want to be disturbed. Well, let's knock and find out. <laughs> okay. So now you're, you're knocking on the door? I'll yes. just open it again. What do you think? I'll take, I'll I'll take two polite. steps to the side just to avoid her anger. Okay. So one of you is knocking and the other is opening the door. And... I'll knock on it. You pull the door open again. So, so, sorry, sorry to bother you. Um, so we're looking for somebody called uh, Thorn. Does that ring a bell for you all? As you say the Thorn, all of their heads jerk a little bit and their eyes widen in recognition. And one of them says, No, nobody like that around here. Now get gone. Oh, that looked like a lie. Come on, let's not make this about lies. I'll, I'll write an insight check on. Okay, go for your insight check. <laughs> uh, let's see, nineteen plus five, so twenty-four. They clearly recognize the name and are now just covering it up. Mm. They weren't scared of the name. It was just a surprise that we said it. Yep, you you didn't see okay. any fear or anything, but they clearly recognize the name. One of these creatures begins to loosen its weapon and its scabbard. Are you going to leave? Or are things going no. to get violent? Uh, I'll send a telepathic message into his head using my awakened mind. No need for violence, little one. Well... You won't leave us alone, and there are these long pauses of awkward silence that are interrupting our research. What are you researching? Does it matter? Listen, we're oh. just looking for this thorn person. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't. Okay. But um, help, help us figure out where they are, All and right. we'll leave that fast, that much faster. Okay. <clears throat> Make a persuasion check, Umaut. Fifteen. Mm, fine. Go talk to the buggers in the magic room. They'll help you. L left, right at the hall. North, south, which direction? <laughs> Go south. Take a right. Go through the library. And then go north from the library. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't catch your name, but thank you. Didn't give my name. Go talk to the buggers and bugger off. Thanks, I darling. Back away a little bit from the door. We'll shut the door for them. All right. You shut the door for them. Yes. All right. I guess we're going to go uh, south. Lead the oh, way, please. What's that? Lead the way. Lead the way? All right. I'll start heading <laughs> south, but I'll be looking around for any anything, or, you know, that looks odd as we're driving. Okay. Traveling south. Do you want to yeah, I'll, I'll right take up the middle and kind of move my way the same. Okay. What was your question, Dulner? Uh... I was saying that as I move south. Oh, do you want us to move our tokens? Just keep moving south. Or as yes, tokens? please move Sounds your tokens good. to represent where you guys are going. Yeah. All right. And so there's a hallway that goes left and right here. Correct. correct? Mm -hmm. And he said to go right, uh, left. So I assume right. it's this way. Stand by one moment while I reveal sure. those areas, please.
All right, so as you guys go into that section of the hallway and it turns left and right, I'm going to describe the area off to your right first. You guys can see quite a bit from where you are. So off to the right looks to be a well-appointed nook. It contains cushioned sofas, corner stands, and a large circular table. On the table are empty glasses and an empty pitcher. And in one corner stands a sturdy cabinet. Lying on the floor, partially under the table, is the unmoving body of a man who is clearly dead, judging by the blood staining his clothing and the fine rug underneath him. And then off to your left is what appears to be a massive library. The ceiling of this vaulted chamber reaches some 30 feet into the air, where steel chandeliers hang, illuminating the area with dozens of bright, flickering candles. Most of these candles appear to be quite burned down. Six large columns support the ceiling, and many bookcases, each stretching 15 feet tall, fill the chamber. And you guys can also see off to the south here is a door. Is there anything, well, as long as it's still up, glowing inside magically the cushion room? I think your, te your 10 minutes has passed by now. As long as, you're, as, long as it's passed, then I'll, I'll take that off. Do we want to go check out the body? Yeah, I'd like to go check out the body. And I'll, if you're going to search him, I'll, I'll guide you. I'll... You should pray for him. <laughs> I'll definitely pray, and I'll touch him and say, good luck. May what, are you... help you. <clears throat> what are you doing exactly with this body, and who's doing it? So I'm just checking to see, like, is there anything I, on the body identifying who it, who they are, uh, what they were doing here, anything like that? Okay, so you you pat down the body looking for yeah. identifying things, and you do find a small notebook inside this person's pocket. All right, let's start flipping through the notebook. All right, you start flipping through that notebook, and inside um, there is a note it looks like it's the owner of the notebook that identifies this person as Jordan. And looking through it, these appear to be alchemical notes and ciphers. So this person is probably an alchemist of some sort, you would presume, who's named Jordan. Now, given some time, anybody who's proficient in alchemy might be able to get some information and some advantage out of this little notebook. But just from a cursory looking through, that's what you ascertain. Kind of flipping over. Um, this is kind of useless to me. Any of you guys good with potions? Nope. 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 No potions. Nope. Nope. I'm pocket it for later. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else on the body other than the notebook? You just find that notebook on the body. Just I mean, there are there are like stab wounds and stuff on it, but that's. I'm gonna take a look at the chest or the. the... A large the cabinet okay the cabinet yes what are you doing exactly i'm just going to open it see if i see anything of importance in there okay you open that and the smell of liquor hits you in the face this is probably was once upon a time a fine stash but now all you can see in it is empty bottles strewn about and some empty glasses as well it looks like whatever liquor was in here was polished off some time ago Nothing left. I take the bottle. I try and open it. Nothing. It's all empty and drained. It's, it's a sad day for a dwarf. <laughs> when the liquor Some, cabinet's empty. Somebody had a party here. Hmm. Yaslin, what would you like to do? Um, I want to look at the cups and see if I can tell if what was inside of it. If it was just like water or tea or something. Okay, give me an investigation check. I got a 10. Okay. So sniffing it, it's not hard to tell that there was alcohol in here. Probably some strong liquor of some sort. 
But what you also notice is that the glasses are all dusty and they have bits of sand around the rim as well. Like, you know, where you would put your lips when you drink something. There's sand there. Not lipstick, sand. They must have been thirsty, but they needed water, not alcohol. Jezrig, what are you doing? Uh, does Jocelyn share the thing about the sand? Oh, yeah, I'll point out the sand on, around the ring of the mm -hmm. cup. I'll look around to see if I can find any more traces of sand. Okay. Uh, in, the, me... in the floor, close to where I am. Give me a perception check as you look around for sand. Um, 17. There's a bunch of sand scattered about the floor, particularly around the liquor cabinet. And you also notice that there's sand that trails off to the left and then goes back to the north. Hmm. It's like a, is it like a more a trail of sand or just patches of it? Just little patches and bits of sand here and there. It's not like a distinct trail. It, it looks like, imagine somebody was to the beach recently and they got yeah. wet and rolled around in sand and then they're walking through the hallway. Little bits of sand are going to fall off as they walk along. It's something like that. So the the sandman went up. Okay. Uh, I can see some trail of whoever drank this. If you want to go after them. It seemed like they drank this a while ago because it's kind of dusty. So they're probably long gone unless they died. Yeah. No, our, our our goblin friends or our our friends in the lab told us to keep going south, if I remember right, and then through the hallway if we wanted to find Thorn. Through the, mm -hmm. the well, to to. Didn't they say north? Yeah, they said north. Out turn of the right and north. Yeah, turn north right. out of the library. A uh, north out of the library. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So do we head into the library and uh, who did they say for us to go look for? The the bug arts or the bug arts. The, the bug something. They told us to bug off to the bug arts. Right. Well let's let's uh let's go find them. They seem to probably know more than the people in the lab. I mean, directions are better than nothing. <laughs> sure. What do you guys think? Let's go Let's to the find, library. Let's find these buggers. As you move toward the library, I just as a reminder, there is a door directly to the south here. Yeah. I'll guide myself and just listen to see if I can hear anything on the other side. Okay, give me a perception check, please. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. You do not hear anything. Yeah. Is this the? Listen? Is this the same type of door that we mm -hmm. that was in the other room? Correct. Yep. Okay. Do we see from this side? Does it open in towards us or in towards the room? It looks like it opens inward toward you. Can we give give like a little? Uh, I want to try to give like a little peek inside, see if I can just kind of slowly open the door, and and just kind of see if there's anything inside. Okay, so you open the door just a little tiny just bit, a little crack, and get just a little crack. Get a look through to what's in there, and you get glimpses of a stone cavern that lies beyond the door, and you think you can see crystal formation along the walls and you also see some movement within the cavern but you can't make out too well what it is with just the little crack 
kind of look over to everybody else. Uh, there's, there's something in there. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but it's something. Looks like there's maybe some crystals in there, too. You guys want to check this up, room out? They told us to go north. That's south. But south feels better to go. It always feels like you're going downhill. As far as I remember, the expression going downhill doesn't usually translate to good things. What if you're sledding in the winter and <laughs> when you get down the hill, your mom gives you hot chocolate, right? Usually, though, when you go downhill, you have to go back uphill. <laughs> Unless you're at a rich person's hill, and then they have an automated lift that takes you back up to the top. Huh? I don't have a fly spell. <laughs> okay. Um... What's the harm in checking it out? I mean, when are we going to be back here, right? On our way out? <laughs> nah. Yeah, let's open the door and see. I mean, it's uh, a door. Open do up do the door doors? the rest of the way and... We'll see what's right. inside of it. Um, loud opens the door. Just, no, unabashed, just opens it up like I live here. <laughs> right. oh. Stand by. I will give you the full description. Through these doors lies a curious and wondrous sight. A bridge stretches to a circular platform upon which a crystalline structure of shards hums with energy and pulsates with blue light. Glowing magical glyphs and runes decorate the platform upon which the massive crystal glows, grows. Above the platform, the floor, about the platform, the floor falls away into a gulf that stretches downward for perhaps a hundred feet. Writhing thorn-covered vines grow from the walls of this chasm, and the floor at the very bottom is covered with a multitude of the same crystal formations, all pulsating and humming with otherworldly energy. Thousands of beautiful butterflies cling to the crystals, their wings slowly pulsing. Isn't this way cooler than going through the library? Oh, that's not normal. That's, that's something. Uh, do I recognize any of these glyphs? Um, if from where you are, it's hard to make out details. You'd have to get closer. I will get closer because I'm curious right now. <clears throat> All right. And then as you study these, are you proficient in Arcana? Yes, I am. All right. Please give me an Arcana check. 18. Beautiful. You study these runes over and you're pretty sure that these are runes of growth of some sort and also runes that imbue magical energy and you also get the sense that there's something regarding planar travel tied into these runes okay folks so we have what we have here is a mix of interplanar travel and some rules to grow or develop something. So I think we have a clue. Umlaut. Good job for an arc. I just go where where the moment takes me. Any idea of it are are the runes connected to those crystals at all? Um, my bet is that they are helping develop this, these crystals. <clears throat> I wouldn't disturb it. I was really thinking about taking one for like a souvenir. You think that's a bad idea? Um, I think that's a great idea. I, I think it's a great <laughs> idea. No one's going to believe this story. Otherwise, um, I need so, I need to like. I do I do want to point out that the crystals, the crystal formations, each crystal itself is about as big as a person. These are massive crystal formations. Chip off a little bit, maybe. Uh, can uh, just a second, and I'll take 
few steps back. I think that's a great idea for you to try. I mean, no, no one's no one's gonna believe this story if I tell it to them. They, 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 they they're, oh, you found <clears throat> crystals in a cave you, somewhere. Like you don't, you don't believe that. You need, you need a little bit of flash to show. You them. need a memento. I yeah, completely you just look, understand. Just tiny, tiny bit. So, can it move? Oh. Nope, go for it. Uh, I'm gonna step move? out of the room. <laughs> So this, the way that I'm seeing it right now, this middle section, large crystals, the glyphs around them, that, that crystal is in the floor right there. That's Are there correct. any others, like, on the walkway that I'm on? Not on can... the walkway, they're, they're on the walls, growing from the walls, the ceiling, and way down below, you can see them on the floor, some hundred feet below. Uh, do you need some help going to pick one of them up? Uh, any of you guys got like a hammer or something like if i if i if i go at this with my mace it's just i, that, I that's rude right that's I rude that would be rude i got a shovel like... <laughs> you want a shovel mm, that might be i feel like that's disrespect <laughs> yeah how about, how about the sand axe Hand axe or oh wait wait hold on I've got a dagger I can maybe chip off a little bit so yeah I I, I kind of want to try to chip off a little bit of the crystal as just just like a sliver okay so as as uh, a, a keepsake so you're gonna have to get up on the platform to get close enough to do that <laughs> okay as you move up onto that platform you can see these hundreds of butterflies that cover that crystal their wings are just slowly pulsating. Several of them begin to take off and take flight into the air, and more and more of them are taking flight as you approach the crystal. You know what? This seems like a bad idea. You got that... this. You can do it. You can up. take a butterfly. Okay, fine. Can take the dagger and try to like chip off a little bit of the crystal just just the smallest like pinky nail sized piece i almost scared a player off with butterflies almost <laughs> <laughs> when nature runs away you listen <laughs> so you <laughs> butterflies whatever you go up there and you got your dagger just and you just start poking at this to try to chip off chip, a piece chip, of this chip, crystal chip, chip. And as you poke at it, your dagger slides off, slides off, and slides off. And then all of the butterflies take flight from this crystal formation. And they begin to swarm about and coalesce into a massive group of butterflies. And you can see black, inky vestiges and tendrils rising off from these butterflies. Oh. And then as one... They come at you. Please stand oh, by. Don't move this was your, a mistake. Don't move your tokens. And I need everyone to select your token and roll initiative. Actually, just roll initiative and then tell me what you got because you messed with the wrong butterflies, buddy. <laughs> See, I told, if nature runs away, you listen. <laughs> Fourteen. Uh, 14. 14. You should okay. be able to. I've added you to the turn oh. tracker. You should be able yep. to update your own initiative. Perfect. Then I will get my guy on here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Better get part of that crystal after this. When you have a great story. You need something. <laughs> you need something to convince people. I agree. You have a great story. <laughs> you know, you meet a guy at a bar and he says, oh yeah, I was in this ca cave full of crystals and all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure, buddy. All of a sudden he whips out a crystal and is like, no, I have proof. And you're like, oh dang, that was for real. <laughs> Or he pulls down his arm and it's a whole bunch of butterfly bites. Oh, you guys are amazing at rolling initiative. 
Okay, so um, <laughs> we got Umlau, Jezrig, and Dolder all tied. Uh, Umlau, you're going to go first because you're right there. And then we'll have Jezrig and then Dulner, just because you're distance. All right, Umlau, you're up. I was muted. Um, so I had my dagger in my hand, mm -hmm. but I've also got a mace. Do you want me attacking with that dagger until I can equip the mace, or can, I mean, can you, I attack with a mace? Yeah, you can just okay. drop yeah, your dagger just, and go with your mace. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm just gonna like uh, drop the dagger on the floor, grab the mace hanging off of my belt, go in for a swing. Um, that is a lovely four. All right. You swing your mace, and the butterflies part. <laughs> around it as it goes through, and then they coalesce back together and continue swarming towards you. Yell out, nature's angry. Nature is very angry. <laughs> Excellent. Jezrig. Oh, just shine a purple light on the butterfly swarm, and I'll be casting fairy fire on them. I need a dexterity save. DC? DC 13. Ooh. All right. Your spell catches hold, and they are illuminated by different flames. Um, oh, my goodness. I'm going to put a little purple marker on their token. Could you put a red marker on your token to indicate that you're concentrating on that, please? Yeah. Just... So now everybody has advantage to attack these butterflies. And then any movement, sir? Uh, no movement. Right. Dulner. Uh, I'm going to look around the corner and I see these glowing butterflies. And Dulner is going to take a shot with his crossbow. Alrighty. See if he can spear some of these butterflies. Oh, horrible rolling. Um, a six. A six. Yeah, your crossbow go goes right through the middle of that swarm. <laughs> Fails to hit anything. This is a bad way to start combat, guys. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm gonna stay out in the hall and have the door ready in case my party wants to, you know, retreat from this. Okay, the butterfly swarm passes over Umlaut, swarming around. And as it comes, Umlaut, these things are all over the place. And you can, this, this black stuff that was peeling off from them, forming an inky cloud of sorts, begins to get in your eyes causing them to water. Could you please give me a dexterity saving throw? <clears throat> oh, thank you. Uh, 16. All right. You managed to blink away whatever this was from your eyes. Eyes still watering. Um, your movement is... Have. Yes, your speed is reduced by half now, as these butterflies are all choking up the area, hitting against you and stuff, causing it very difficult to move. And then, <clears throat> these butterflies begin to land on you, one after another, until you are covered with butterflies. And then you can feel them wriggling around and working through the chinks in your armor, underneath your clothing. Oh, but as you're moving about, brushing them off, you manage to evade whatever they're trying to do this time. Yaslin, you're up. Um, I'm going to use Thorn Whip at them. Okay, I think that's an attack roll you make. Yes, I got a nine. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, that will Wait, not. Wonderful. That will not hit them. Great guys. Horn whip goes out. The butterflies part. Pass. Nothing. Are you good? I'm gonna yell. We should get out of here, and then start going towards the door. <laughs> okay, you move one step closer to the door. <clears throat> Don't we get advantage on your uh, attacks versus them? Or oh, yeah, you sh them? you should have an advantage. So, Yaslin, yeah. uh, we'll do yours again, please. 19. That will hit them. Hey. Uh, four damage. <laughs> four damage. <laughs> and that does bludgeoning damage, I believe. Uh, piercing. Piercing damage. Ooh, nice. So you lash out with your thorn whip and snatch a couple of those butterflies out of the air, slicing them in two. The hundreds that remain seem perturbed. And then you back away toward the door. All right, we're at the top of the round. Would you guys like to discuss anything at all? Tactics, etc. We should get out of here as quickly as possible. I will not fight that idea. They are right in between me and the door, though, if I'm looking at this right. I mean, they're all yeah. around you. They're totally yeah. swarming you. Can he walk through them, or are they blocking his path? They're not impeding his movement. I mean, they're impeding his movement in so much that his speed is halved, but he can walk through right. them, yes. Okay, right. so he can disengage and walk. They're tiny. They're, these these butterflies are normal sized <laughs> butterflies. There's just like hundreds of them, right? Right. Okay. So, but they're all kind of like legion coalesced into a swarm, right? Not all of them. There are still thousands covering the walls. <laughs> you got the ones off from that crystal formation in front of you, and only those ones. We better leave before the rest decides to join the fight. I got an idea. There we go. I love what the bard says. Go for it. It, like, it might let, go badly. Let me but... just flirt with the butterflies. I'm sure this is good. <laughs> I, I, I got an idea. It can go great or it can go horrible. All right. Well, let's. But I got an idea. Let's do this. Umlau, what are you doing? Going to cast sleep on the giant kind of coalesced formation of them. At. Uh, Second level. A second level? Okay. Yeah. So please roll 7d8 and let me know what you get. Okay. Seven, right? 7d8. Yes. I, I'm just going to roll that in here. To save time. And that's in roll 20. So I just rolled those in roll 20. The right. first roll. Okay, excellent. You so, cast your spell on these butterflies and nothing happens. They're still swarming you. I'm out. I'm out of ideas. I got nothing left. I'm out. Any uh, movement? I start beelining it towards the door. Okay, you move at half speed. So you have 15 feet of movement, which means you'll be able to get just south of your companions. Yep, let me just kind of, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Excellent. Well, you got you only got half your movement, so you, could, you have 15 feet. And yep. They're difficult terrain, so you'd be able to get right there. Okay, that's fine. And Jezrig. Okay, I'll just throw a pink Eldritch Blast at these butterflies. Right, you have advantage. So that's a 22. That'll hit. Or... Uh, eight damage. Excellent. You blast several of them out of 
the air. There's still hundreds remaining. I'll shout, Umlaut, let's go. And I'll run up to the first bookshelf. And that's my turn. All right. Dolner. Dolner is going to um, move up five feet. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. And grab... Um, I will grab Ilmart. Okay. And try and drag Ilmart out the door. Okay. Are you resisting at all, Umlaut? Nope. I'm already. Okay. So Let's you, go. All right. You, so you grapple, grab... You've grappled him with your action, and now you can move at half your speed to drag him out. All right. So five... 10, 15, 25. All right. You have dragged, so dragged him out. Him here. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Slim. Sorry, yes. Get the door, door on your way out. out. I got this. Okay. And as Yaslin stands there, the last in the room, these butterflies fly closer and closer. You are now inside the cloud of butterflies, the inky darkness swirling around you. Please give me a dexterity saving throw. Ooh, four. <laughs> Yaslin, the watering in your eyes is uncontrollable, and the world goes dark around you as you are blinded. I'm going to put a little marker on your token. And then you can feel all these butterflies begin to settle on your skin. Little teeth and feet working away at whatever armor and clothing you have. Oh, baby, there it is. And as their teeth go to work. This is probably not good. Stand by. You take eight points of piercing damage. Good roll for us on that one. And... Oh, I'm not done yet. I'm not done rolling. Uh, damn it. <laughs> Thir 13 points of poison damage. And you are poisoned for the next round. Um, oh, give me a constitution saving throw. May have been a little too quick to deal with the poison damage. 17. Oh, so you'll take half damage then. So instead of 13, you'll just take six poison damage and you are not poisoned. Nice. All right. There's that. There we go. Still blinded though. Ha! <laughs> and top of the round, any more discussion? Isn't it Yoslin's turn? Oh, yes, it is. I skipped her. Yoslin, yep. it's your turn. <laughs> I'm going to try to, like, get out of there. Okay. As you move out of the swarm, you are able to see once more. Oh, actually, that, con uh, that condition ends at the end of your turn. But continue, please. I'm going to try to shut the door. All right, so there's currently a swarm of butterflies right there. You're going to try to shut these doors, pushing the swarm out? Yes. Okay, let's see. I feel like this is probably... Can I help with that? Um, On your turn, you could. Uh. I think this is probably going to be um, an acrobatics check or an athletics check. Either you're trying to do it quickly to get the swarm out and push them through it, or you're just using strength or something to force them out. Which would you prefer? Uh, acrobatics. Can I use guidance on myself? Uh, guidance requires an action, I believe, to cast it. Or is it a bonus action? Action, so no. It's action. No. The, the act okay. of closing the door and trying to force these butterflies on the other side would be an action. Okay. I'll just use acrobatics for it. Okay, go for it. 10. A 10. 
these butterflies do not move. You got one of the doors closed, but they're still swarming around the corner, and the the weight of them is holding the door open. Need some help, guys. Are you staying put? Uh, yes. All right. If I'm actively trying to shut the door, yeah. Okay. Umlaut. I'm going to try to help Yaslin close the door. Okay. Athletics check or acrobatics? Your choice. Uh, Athletics. Okay, go for it. 23. All right. You managed to get the other door closed, pushing the rest of the swarm back in the other side. There are still a few of these butterflies left on your side, land have landed on the doorway, but separated from their companions, they quickly become less hostile and just relax, land on the door, and begin pulsating their wings once more. Well, grab one for your... Uh... Get one of them and kind of like put it in a pouch. I'm going to kill it. Good enough for a keepsake. That's fine. That's fine. And we'll drop out of combat rounds now. You said you took one of the butterflies? Put it in a pouch. <laughs> okay. Collected a buff butterfly. Noted. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll own that. I'll own that. That, um... <laughs> It was when, fun. Nat- it was Nat- <laughs> when nature is uh, angry, the the you you listen, you listen. Uh, you, Yaslin, you you took a couple hits there, didn't you? Uh, I would say more than a couple. Uh, do, do, do you need a little bit of a little bit of boost? Do you have a potion? Are you okay? Um. Yeah, I I need some healing. I feel like I'm bleeding a lot. You know. <laughs> You're not that bad, though, right? I mean, I'm less than half. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cast Healing Word on Yoslin because that was my fault. <clears throat> so, uh, 1d4 plus 2. That is a total of four hit points back. Sorry, sorry, it's not much, but sorry. Helps a little bit, thank you. Guess we go to the uh, bug arts now. And stop opening random doors. <laughs> That's fun though, That was, think about it, think about that story. Awesome. You know the important thing about the story? You have to leave to be able to tell. (laughs) (laughs) Always forget that part. Yes. So I'll lead the way through the uh, to the library. And again, just looking around and see if there is anything out of place. I'll I'll take up the the rear this time in shame for <laughs> getting us attacked by a giant swarm of butterflies. All right. You guys begin pushing your way through this library. Thousands of books here, it would look like. Oh, hundreds, at very least. And is then this as, like on fire? Or as, that... you, as you get partway through, you notice that the southwest corner of the library is a complete mess. There are damaged bookcases, scattered books, and underneath you can see what appear to be some humanoid forms, but they're partially covered by books and other debris. Uh, Look, I'll take a a peek around. What types of books do we have in this library? So you start grabbing some and inspecting them? Yeah, I'll just read the... The side of the, of some of them. So you look at the spine of the book to see the titles, and interestingly enough, the ink seems to be fading away. You could kind of make out some of the titles, some of the words, but and then you look more and more of the spines, and in fact, yes, the ink is fading away. 
Hmm. Uh, I'll pull one of them and see if the interior is also fading away. All right, you pull one out randomly, open up the interior and flip through some pages. And yes, all of the ink is fading away. It doesn't look like it's water damage or anything. It's just literally the ink is light, getting lighter and lighter. That's bizarre. Folks, what do you see? You said there was humanoid bodies underneath the like papers and stuff? You can see a few, yes. You can't see a whole lot. Um, you'd have to remove some of the debris and books and whatnot from the top of them. I'm going to try to uncover them. Okay. You uncover them, and what you can see are three Windvale soldiers. You recognize the uniform and the armor. Um, and when you talk to Marshal Iron Sky, she had mentioned that two patrols had been sent to investigate to see if the West Tower had fallen, and they never returned. It would appear that you found one or part of one of these patrols here. And you also notice that there are thorny vines wrapping around their bodies. Ants and worms crawling all about the bodies as well, having already partially consumed the flesh. Got some decaying bodies over here, guys. Come over and take a look. Um, do the thorns look like the same thorns that we saw in the room we just left? Like the thorns and the vines? Yes, these thorns and vines are consistent with other thorns and vines you've seen in the area. In fact, some in some parts of these corridors, you've seen thorns and vines pushing through the roof and the walls at places. Not, not roots, but thorny vines, which is... Very interesting. You'd expect this deep beneath the ground to find roots instead. If I remember right, in the other room, the vines were kind of moving or... You didn't see any, of... you didn't see any no? vines moving at all. Okay. So these are... And these are just... Seem, do they look like they just kind of have grown over or do they look like the vines... It would take the people. It would take a long time for vines to grow over the people that way. Something caused them clearly to go out and wrap around these soldiers. Just kind of go go and look over to everybody. So uh, I, I'm not that great with plants, but it really looks like the vines killed these guys. Then I, I don't know that much about plants, but I, is that normal? Aslim, you're one of those nature people, right? Yes, I, I would say so. Nature people. <laughs> <laughs> Can I attempt to see if I know like what the vines are? Sure. Give me a nature people check, please. <laughs> While everybody's and... looking at the bodies, I'm going to uh, ritual cast detect magic if that's okay. Okay. What was your result, Jocelyn? I got a 10. A 10. Okay. And you were trying to determine, I'm sorry, say again? Like if I could recognize what type of vines these were. Okay. So you don't recognize the type of vines these were, except that you for sure know one thing. These vines do not appear to be native to this plane. They're from a different plane. Yeah, these vines aren't really from here, if you guys know what I mean. Like, not our world. Okay, so these track with what we found there, because that room is conjuring and growing things here. So it makes sense that these vines that are unnaturally big came from there okay so we got otherworldly butterflies and otherworldly vines we have an otherworldly garden so far all right 
Mm. Sh- should I take a piece of the vine? No. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Give okay. me just a second. Yes, you should pick some of the vines to enrich your story, please. Moves <laughs> away. Oh, you know what? Last time, you guys told me no, and then you moved away and said yes, and I think that's that caused it to happen the other time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with not taking it. You're piece of you're piece. saying I jinxed it? I, I'm just saying that there's coincidences, and then there's you know what happened. You, you should be scientific to see if it, if it was a coincidence and try it again. Ah, just go with my mood. So, so Umlaut, what, are you doing something to the vines, Umlaut? <laughs> nope. No. Okay. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Okay. So, uh, yeah. is there anything else around here for us? Like, and I just kind of search around outside of the the bodies. Is there anything else besides those bodies around besides, the area? Besides the bodies, I mean, there's some weapons from the soldiers lying about. They probably died trying to defend their lives with. Um, books. How much else in the library? Interest. Okay, we have a a library with books that are fading. We have vines. What's the detect magic is finished? I'm just going to look around for anything magic. Okay. Um, none of the books appear to be magic that you can see. However, there is a faint glow of magic in the general area covering the books. Over over here. Um, most of the books in the entire library <clears throat> have a, a glow of magic, but it doesn't appear that the books themselves are magical. What you think is that there's some sort of magic at work on the books themselves. So if, if you put that book back that was fading and open it again, does it start fading again? Well, you guys open that book. The book, I should probably clarify, the words aren't actively fading in front of you in a way that's noticeable. It just uh, looks okay. like they've been slowly Fade. fading away. Was there anything magical on the guards? Nothing magical on them, no. Something up with the bookcases, guys. Not sure what it is yet. But. Let's find the the booger people. Yeah, I think we should just keep moving. Sounds good. Where is our vanguard? I, I feel unprotected right here. You're the vanguard. You're the vanguard. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. And you press your way through the library and there is indeed a door on the northern wall. What the heck? Who's opening I'll first? open it. I, I don't mind going first, and I'm sure the bug arts are up there. Would hate to see our warlock get the first attack. <laughs> on. So that's what I'll... I like to see, Jess. He's got this. <laughs> so, Jess, are you opening the door? Yeah. All right, stand by. Hear nothing. Uh, whoops. We went south just to go north? That's messed up. <laughs> As you guys look <clears throat> down this hallway, you can see debris and blood splatters all about, presumably from battle, scattering north and south down the hallway. And at the far end, there appear to be some more doors. And in front of you here, you can see protruding from one section of the wall is a carving of a wizard holding an open book. Yeah. 
Is it the uh, book glowing, or is the wizard glowing magically? Yes. The pages of the book glow with magic. Are there any writings on this book that I can see? So are you going up close to us so you can actually see it? Why not? All right, you get next to it, and you notice that the pages are completely blank. And also, since you're standing right there, you notice that the sculpture is made for stone. The entire sculpture of the wizard from stone, except for the book itself. The book appears to be a real book held between his hands. Can you remove the book? Um, I can't, but I, I bet you can. <laughs> and I'll take a few steps away. No, 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 I know that <laughs> trick. I ain't, I'm good. Someone else can go for the book. Umla uh, could Luke, probably do it. <laughs> I've seen this before. I'll use Mage Hand and pull the book away and bring it to me. All right. You, your Mage Hand grabs a hold of that book and it gives a couple tugs. And you can see that the stone statue is firmly grasping the covers of that book, holding it in place. Um, the statue is really attached to the book, sorry. What, what type of magic is the book glowing? Um, gosh, now you're going to make me go look up the schools of I, magic. I hate that question. Uh, you don't have to. What's that? <laughs> you don't have to do that. That's okay. I apologize. Illusion. <laughs> Abduration. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it's like a protection spell around it. As long as it's not a vocation, we're fine. No, no. Abduration is the problem. Because uh, abduration is the protective spells, and that right. means that will blow on your face. The right. schools of magic are the worst thing. I'm <laughs> I know. Uh, so I have to look them up every time, and I have to read through what each one does to be able to tell you the answer to this. I uh, apologize for it's, oh, it's okay. necromancy. I mean, it's it's the game. Okay, so is it abjuration? Um, uh, I don't think it's it's not it's not conjuration. It's not divination. Um, Illusion, maybe. I don't think it's I don't think it's enchant. Evocation. Evocation. It's not evocation. Um, it's not illusion. Not necromancy. Um, might be transmutation. Um, I'm gonna go with transmutation. <laughs> Final answer. Final answer. <laughs> this is like, this is like of all things in the game. This is what I'm worst at. Like schools of magic and determining what does what without like reading through and thinking about it. <laughs> Look, they change every edition, so do they? <laughs> you you cannot even build the intuition for it. Yeah, because they keep changing. They keep changing what they do. Yay. <laughs> yeah, transmutation. It tracks. Uh, final question about the book. Is the statue holding the book in a way we cannot flip its pages? Well the pages or... can be the pages can be turned. In fact, they're open to a certain page, like a middle of the book already. So you can turn the pages. But, okay. Uh, I thought it would it would be grasping oh, with no. the thumb it's, over the pages. No, it's it's holding it like open already and you know the pages are open. Yeah over top of the thumbs, you know, so you can flip them um, as desired. Uh, my mage hand will be just flipping some of the pages. Okay. Are they all blank? As it flips the first page, you hear a rumbling. And the wizard retreats back into the wall just slightly, and you see a shimmering and then the wizard becomes transparent, revealing a secret door that leads into a chamber beyond. And stand by. And through this now translucent section of stone, you can see 
something. The floor of this large chamber is dominated by an arcane circle etched with runes and glyphs of power and surrounded by a multitude of candles. In the four corners are unlit braziers and a few curious humanoid creatures stand about the arcane circle. Stand by. They are disturbingly roach-like, with short legs, long, gangly Ooh. arms, hard carapaces on their backs, and vaguely humanoid faces. Several more of those same roach-like creatures are piled up inside this arcane circle, though they appear to be deceased from the blood and ichor and missing limbs and wounds upon their bodies. And as this door shimmers away. You can see these roachmen standing around looking at their fallen companions, heads facing down. They stand there in silence. They don't appear to have noticed you. Uh, this Let's guy that is this guy that is closer to me will hear a voice in its head. What's going on here? Its head comes up immediately. And it looks at you and it says, <laughs> Its eyes go wide and it looks to its companions and they begin chittering in a strange language. And then immediately the three of them rush across the room and one of them comes up through the door out here, comes up to you and says, You must come! You must come! You're the one! You're the one! You were prophecy! You can help us! You can help us! You can help us! These things are small. They come up to your waist, maybe. And this thing grabs at your, your leggings and tries to pull you into the room. I'll reluctantly start going with him, but I'll ask. I can help you with what, sweetie? And he's he's just, he's not like dragging you into the room, but just kind of gently pulling you into the room. I imagine it like a, a toddler pulling you. Mm -hmm. And he points at one of these roach creatures dead in the circle and says, that one right there, that one right there had 39 wee children dead now, crushed, crushed. Gotta bring him back. Gotta bring him back. He has a wife. He has, well, he has several wives, wives and children's is, and stuff, and 39 of them to support. Have to bring him back. Bring him back. And then he starts, and they all of them start pointing at lots of these other roaches and talk about, you know, how many children they have, their wives, their spouses they left behind, you know, their family businesses and how they have to maintain their elderly, you know, their aging relatives and stuff. And they're just going on about all of these people's lives and stuff and how we have to get them back. Otherwise, this massive repercussion is gonna spread across the land of all these horrible people and results and stuff because they're dead now. Who did this? Yeah. I'll just ask you, who did this? Ah, uh, the Oathbreakers, the Oathbreakers, they killed them, Oathbreakers killed them. What is an Oathbreaker? You should know. What do they look like? He points just right at you, and then he points at Umlau, and then he points at Yaslin, and then he points at Yezrig. Oathbreakers! Oathbreakers! Wait! You're not gonna kill two, are you? You know that's bad! I'll start moving around the, the room, and I wanna try to see if I recognize what this symbol here in the middle of the room does or is. Those are like arcane runes and glyphs that are partially Glyph. visible beneath the bodies of these roach creatures that are piled atop them. I'll start moving some of the, the bodies around just to see if I can ascertain what this thing should do. Two of these creatures immediately leap at you and start grabbing at you. What 
you doing? What are you doing? Stop, 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 stop. We have them ready. They're all ready. I need to see what's underneath them. No, 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 no. They're ready. That, well, I'll talk slowly for you. I know it's hard to understand. We put them here. They're ready. We just need your help. We, we need a volunteer. Hello. Hello. One of them jumps out into the hallway, points at Yaslin. Would you like to volunteer? Do you have a vo we have We have a volunteer, yes? Volunteer for what? Well, the magic ritual, of course. We have to bring them back. I don't like being voluntold. <laughs> no, 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 it's volunteer. You have to be 100% voluntary. I'm like 80% oh. voluntary right now. It, it runs back in to the other creatures and they begin chittering and chattering in a lang in a different language. Is there um, anything magical in this room? What's going on? Um, these runes and glyphs on the ground appear to be magical. Uh, this. Aha! Aha! This is conjuration magic. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> And then this creature comes back out to Yaslin and says, <clears throat> Consensus is that 80% is good enough. Thank you. <laughs> Come. <laughs> He's trying to drag you into the room. I'll, uh, I'll follow slowly. Okay. Excellent. Now, we just need you to, to stand in the middle of the body pile. You you want me to stand on the dead bodies? And so don't worry, you're gonna your your lifeblood will bring them back. It'll all be just fine. Wait wait wait, my lifeblood? You vol you volunteer for it. You're eighty percent in, and that's good enough. I'm not gonna give my life for people I don't know. <laughs> oh, you now you're gonna go back on your promise. Well, see, I die, like, see? I got family too. No, no, man. no, no, no. You see, oath breakers. You see why we call you oath breakers? Oath breakers. It's not really an oath. It's more like, you know, lying a bit. Why can't you use your own blood? It doesn't work that way. It has to be um, special magic. You wouldn't understand. Oh, I would understand. I'm no, no, no. very well versed in magic. No, no, no. I don't think you'd understand now. We we will need a volunteer. Somebody will volunteer. Hmm. And when the person volunteers, what will you be doing with them? Well, you know, um, <clears throat> stabbing. Mostly. I'll draw my rapier. Wow! As you draw your weapon, they grab theirs and draw forth short swords. Now! What's the meaning of this? We stab you when you volunteer. That's the way it works. Well, no one is volunteering now. I'm volunteering to poke you. So well, you, you can be the martyr. No, I'm not going to do that. That's silly. I have 59 children myself. How many children do you have? One. That's what I thought. So your life is worth less than mine because you have fewer offspring to provide for. But I still have time to have more offsprings. Oh, I don't know. You're an oathbreaker. Your reproduction rate is low. I don't think you could do it. Is that a challenge? We don't have time to fulfill that challenge. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to walk out that door. And you can find a volunteer when someone else comes here. Oh, I don't think you understand. If there's not going to be a volunteer, then there will be a voluntolder. Question for you. You said you needed consent. 
Oh, we had consent, and then you took it back. So, that's good enough for us. Do uh, Dol you know where we could find Thorn? What did you say? Do you know where we could find Thorn? Thorn? They look at each other and chitter a little bit in that language of theirs. And then one looks back at you triumphantly and says, If one of you volunteers, we'll tell you where to find the Thorn. After you show us Thorn, one of us will volunteer. Hmm... That seems like a proposal ripe for more oath breaking. You're breaking your oath. Show us Thorn, and then we'll volunteer. No, 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 no. We get the volunteer <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. first. Volunteer first. <laughs> then, once our companions are back, then we show you the Thorn. Your companions <laughs> will not come back. Of course they will. It's magic. The magic isn't that powerful. No, you don't understand this magic. You don't even... Have you ever seen one come back? Well, we haven't been able to get a volunteer quite yet. So, Ooh. who shall it be? We need a volunteer. No, no, one of the Oathbreakers. Show us Thorn, and I'll come back here and help you out. Okay, you know what? <clears throat> this is taking too long. Two yep. of them jump on Yezrig and start dragging you into the middle of the pile. I'm presuming you're resisting? Uh, no. I'll go to the middle of the pile. Okay. They drag you to the middle of the no. pile. And they're holding you there. Ah, okay, now do it! And then this one's coming over there. He's, got his, he's already got his sword in his hand. Is anybody doing anything? Wait, we're we're yes. just letting this happen? No, definitely not. Uh, no, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> can I, I can I do one thing? What what well it depends on what it is. I'll just misty step my way behind Umlaut. Okay, so we're casting a spell. Alright, let's roll yeah. let's roll initiative then. <laughs> <laughs> um I'll pull out somewhere. There we go. There's our turn order. So roll initiative and then just update your um, initiative in the turn order, please. That's the same. That moment when the, the dice roll in your favor. But where? Oh, yeah. There you go. Good job. Good job. Everybody updated theirs? Yep. Dolner got the exact same? I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, Rig. Go first. Uh, I'll miss the step my way behind Umlaut. Right. And that's a, that's a bonus action to cast that, right? Yeah. Okay. So I can Eldritch Blast the first dude here. All right. Eldritch Blast away. Uh... AC of 24. That's a hit. Four. Ah. Okay. 12 damn. Uh, sorry. 10 damage. Okay. Stand by. Oh, crap. <laughs> I just pushed the wrong button. And your Eldritch Blast slams into this creature. Would you like to describe how it dies? It's just a pink knife 
of energy that goes into his chest and makes him squirmish in pain as he goes out. And as he collapses to the ground, one of the other ones cries out, He had 59 wee ones, you murderer! Anything else? I'm helping with the sacrifice. Yaslin. Um, I'm gonna use Thorn Whip on this one. Does seven hit? Does not hit. <laughs> Snaps in the air before his face as he ducks aside. And then I'm going to attempt to get out of the chamber area. All right, you retreat out of the chamber area. And this roach creature scrambles forward toward Dulner and begins stabbing at you with its tiny little sword. Yeah! Oh, baby. And armor class is 17. Uh, his sword stabs and scrapes off several times as he's unable to penetrate your shell. Umlau, you're up. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we weren't letting that happen. Uh, so I'm actually going to go into the room and try to take an attack on the creature that just tried to attack Dalnir. Okay. Uh, with the mace, that's gonna be, uh, natural 20, uh, plus three, 23. That'll hit. It's a crit too, if it's a nat 20. So, uh, how, how do you do crits? Is it just double, double roll damage twice? The, or dice. Or the dice are doubled. The dice are doubled, so not right. roll twice. Yeah, you roll. Yep, you roll the dice twice, basically. Okay. And then you add the modifier on afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't know if you did um, roll the dice twice or just take whatever you rolled and then double it. I gotcha. Yep. Um, five, three, eight, six, fourteen. And 19 plus 120. Would you like to describe this? So I just kind of come in with uh, my mace, not my buddies, and just overhand slam down onto the cockroach. And his head cracks open, collapses to the ground, very dead. Dulner, you're up. Do I have en enough movement to make it back out the door again? Yes, you do. Yes. You only move 15 feet to get there. Gonna Five, no, 10 feet to get, get there. Get back out. Yep. Uh, let me get back out a, li a little bit, give Dolnir room to get out. Okay. Dolnir? Well, Dolnir is actually going to go forward and grab the cockroach guy and say, we didn't want to hurt you. We are just looking for Thorn. Will you show us where he is, and we will leave you alone? All right. He looks at you, looks at his companions. Uh, please give me an intimidation check. Not my best suit, but give it a shot. An 11. An 11? His eyes narrow, and he says, Screw you, Oathbreaker! All right, so then with my extra movement, one, two, so five, ten, I'll drag him to the middle. Oh, so you were you were trying to actually grapple him. So give me an, I, give me an athletics check if we're going to okay. actually try to grapple him. Uh, seventeen. You you did successfully grapple him. That was your action to do so. Yep, and then I will just basically drag him towards the center of the circle. Okay. Yep. You got him there. To where he's here then. Or, you know, close enough. Yeah. Yep. You can get him there. He's a small creature. Pretty easy to manhandle him. And you get him situated yep. right there. He's grappled. Excellent. 
And then <laughs> he's the last one. So you got him there grappled. He's got his little sword. He begins stabbing away at you. Oh, that is a hip hit. It slips in among your scale mail for five points of piercing damage. And any discussion? Well, let's try to get him to help us, but let's make him bleed. If, if, if so, there's only one left, there's no, there's no harm in. I mean, they started it, right? They started it, so. But. Well, you guys refused to sacrifice one of you, so you could. I mean, from their point of view, it's your fault. I need my blood. Uh, yeah. You have I no. It belongs to me. You don't. Your progeny is not nearly as many as those of their companions. You know. Quantity over quality. I mean, like, yeah. Other way around. Is it all Quality life sacred and of equal value, you know? I say we just go after him. Just curb stop all of them. This is my uh, redemption song. I think, as I've heard someone say, it's stabby stabby time. Stabby stabby time, baby! <laughs> all right, let's do it. Jezra, you're up. Well, since they want people to bleed, I'll... Oh. One, two, three, four. And I'll mm -hmm. lunge at him with my rapier. And I won't even bother to boom blade. So, um, AC of 16. That hits. Four. Nine damage. Would you like to describe this? I'll just lunge at him rapier first and stab him right between the eyes and I'll pull it so anything that comes from him oozes out on his pile. Beautiful. You have destroyed him. <clears throat> These three remaining creatures are now dead. And no one is left to care for all of the many children. <laughs> Okay, I guess the re their reach fall doesn't work. Do we want to search this room? Uh, um, let's just push the just move on. the carcasses just so we can better understand what's underneath it, what they were actually trying to accomplish. I just had a bad experience with bugs, so if if you guys are okay with that, I'm I'm just gonna kind of hang out in the hallway. I, I don't you're, need this souvenir. You're the weakest orc I've ever seen. <laughs> These are I'll life lessons. These are life I'll, left lessons. I'll take I'll take my uh, war hammer and just start clearing the bodies. So okay, I'll take cliffs. Forcefully clearing the bodies away with your war hammer. I'll be using my boots. And once you guys have cleared most of these bodies away, you can you can see now much more clearly the runes and glyphs that are inscribed into this floor of this chamber. Can we understand what they are supposed to do? Somebody is proficient arcana, would like to give an arcana check. Yes. 14. 14. You're pretty sure this is a conjuration circle. The type of conjuration circle a typical wizard would use. Okay, someone tricked these poor souls. Can I guess where is it conjurating from? Upper planes, lower planes? This, this appears to be a standard conjuration circle, so it's not okay. linked to any planes, but you could a wizard could conjure creatures from almost anywhere into the circle, and what the circle does is it prevents that creature or its spells or effects from leaving the circle, so it effectively traps the creature there and protects the summoning wizard. <laughs> I 
okay. So someone wanted to conjure something apparently big and bad. We move on. Yeah, let's keep going north. Yeah, call out. Anything good in there? <clears throat> What's that? Uh, Anything good in there? Just a conjuration circle. Probably someone tricked these roaches into believing they were helping their friends. A any ideas on how we close the door? Like they, they were talking about having, you know, 50, 60, 80, 100 and some odd kids. That is just the idea of that coming to me in my sleep is not good. Maybe the, maybe the door will close on its own? I mean, I don't see any way in or out of that room, so I guess their children will not be coming from there. That's fine. It'll just be my personal nightmare. As you guys stand there and talk about this, you see the wall once more solidify and become solid. Oh, thank you, Bahamut. Thank you. Oh, so It appears that this magical gateway has a timer of sorts to it. All right. Well, I just uh, moved north. Yes, so we'll head we'll head north towards the door and check for anything on the way, like traps or what have you. Okay, give me a perception check as you're looking around for traps. I'll guide myself as I'm going. <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything. <laughs> I got a seven, natural <clears throat> one. Yeah, there are no traps in this hallway. Nothing to worry Sweet. about. It's all clear, everyone. We're right. good. Yes. All right, so we'll head up to the door. And I'll take a quick listen. Uh, what did what did the the guys from the first room said? Should we knock on the left door or the right door? Said uh, south through the library, down the hallway, going north, and then uh, a left. Is what, left, I, so. is what I okay. Had. And who so did they be... who did they say were going to help you again? The bug arts. And I'm where were sure we and where were the bug arts. Where were the bug arts located? Where did they say they were located? Wait, did we just kill the bug arts? Did we just <laughs> kill the guys? No, those the... little lab rats. <laughs> we killed the roach. They, they were roaches, not bug arts. I tried to get them so... to help us. But that, <laughs> but that wasn't a door. Do you think those little lab rats ended up going and just trying to trap them, trying to to set us up? I mean, <clears throat> probably. They didn't want to help us. We asked for their help. They didn't want to help us. So. They're going to have something coming. We're right. going to have a talk. Guys, let's take a quick little five minute bio break <laughs> or so, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll see where this goes. Perfect. Sounds good. Oh.
did we kill the guys that would help us? I don't know if they would have helped us, though. They weren't very smart. Uh, they didn't have to be smart. They just We just needed them to point a direction. Mm. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> As a player, story of my life. Killing the helpful NPCs. As a DM, it happens all the time. <laughs> As a DM, I see it all the time. <laughs> But my players are getting better at avoiding healing everyone. Mm hmm. always make our way back to um, the, the goblins or whatever those things are. I think we move forward. Yeah, I think it'll loop back around. We, we okay. might be able to find, because we're getting lots of hints of what's going on. Mm -hmm. We just need to, at some point, start connecting the dots. All right, what are we doing? Well, they said go left. We have a door on our left. So I think, Umlaut, would you be a darling and open the door, please? Do we listen first? Uh, I could just open it, I don't mind. I mean, you're right there. Yeah, I'll listen before I open. <laughs> All right, give me a perception check, please. 14. All right, you listen to that door, and behind the door, you hear silence. It's all clear, guys. I'll try the door handle, see if it opens. It's not locked. It's not locked, all right. Let's give it a shot. I will start opening the door. All right, do you finish opening the door? And I will finish opening the door. All right, you open that door. You show it who's boss. <sighs> Look in, do we see anyone, or is it just disarray? You see a massive room that is a complete disaster. Destroyed furniture and debris litter the floor. In the north, a mass of thorn-covered vines has torn through the wall spilling broken stone all about. To the south, a desk and bookcase are in disarray, with ravaged books and sheets of parchment scattered across the floor. Um, I'm going to head in and check to see, does it look like the vines went through the room, like the, the damages to the either the desk or... So those look like pew things. The benches. I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Uh, just to see if the vines actually did this damage. It looks like up here where all the bricks and stuff are crumbled away, that's where the vines punched through and destroyed bits of the wall. Um, the rest of this that's all in disarray and messed up looks like it wasn't caused just from the vines. Something else was doing that. guys the room's in disarray do we want to check it out first looks safe to walk in uh look around does it look safe to walk in other than the vines yeah you don't That's notice anything good. dangerous okay. all right i'll head to the desk that looks like it was broken into so i guess it's down here <clears throat> yes correct okay and do a quick look around Okay, you look around and there's books and parchment on the desk and it looks like the writing on them is also fading away and mostly Ill illegible. Illegible. If 
anybody else want to look around different areas? Hey, uh, uh, Yoslin, is are these the same things that we saw, kind of kill the, kill the other guards in the library? The vines. Pointing, pointing over towards the vines that are breaking through. I'll go look at them. Okay, Yoslin, give me a perception check as you look at the vines. Twenty. So you notice that inside the mass of vines, there appears to be a humanoid figure. And these vines are completely wrapped around it. Can I try to pull out the body, I guess? So with the mass of vines wrapped around it the way they are, you try to do a little bit of prying and pulling, and these things are stuck tight to this thing. This oh, is going to be more of like a hacking process, more than likely. I'll scream at the top of my lungs. Don't do it. We yeah. saw the crystals. I'm good. I'm just going to back away. All right, you back away from that. Now, Dolner, you were over at the desk looking through all these books and parchments. You do find one parchment that is somewhat unfaded and you can just make out a little bit of what's written on that parchment it specifically mentions there's a bit that talks about an attack on the tower and it references creatures that seem to be these creatures you found in the alchemy lab it, it seems like it's describing those same creatures only it refers to them as dust goblins and then there's another reference to some creatures that are called roachlings, which you believe are probably the other ones that you found. And it appears to lay out that these creatures had a hand in attacking the tower. And it mentions as well that the creatures were led by a strikingly beautiful woman clothed in vines and leaves. And then there's some illegible, illegible writing and then you see mention of a garden to the southwest. I uh, found a piece of paper. Looks like the goblins, it's known as dust goblins, and roachlings, those guys that we just killed, were part of the tower being attacked. There's some sort of of uh, viney woman that was also leading the attack, but there's a garden to the southwest. Uh, south but, I mean, west. Isn't that maybe we have to go east before we go west, or? I don't know. Just came from there. But the, the one thing we do know is those creatures in the alchemist room were actually part. So they're not innocents. So the little lab rats that sent us on wild goose chase? Yeah. Alright. And then uh the 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 little guys that we killed, they're they are not the buggers. Well, we don't know. I mean, the buggers, the, the goblins said that they were the buggers, I think. They they just think they're little bugs or whatever. Um, but roachlings is what they're called in this memo or the, in this parchment. So I think DM, they were the buggers. DM question. Do any, does any of this stuff kick in with my college of lore any songs any stories that i would have heard about this before um <clears throat> give me an investigation check as you think about that stuff could also oh. be um a nature check if you're proficient or a history check would also be fine uh 22 history okay excellent um this does Reminds you of some stories that you have heard about the Feywild. 
Um, these creatures, especially roachlings, you've heard mention of from the Feywild, and you do know that there are several different types of goblins that are indigenous to the Feywild as well. So this all kind of fits in, and then you think about the vines and the thorns that you guys have been finding. You think about the butterflies, and then these crystals and the runes and stuff that had to do something with planar properties. And all of this starts to click in. Um, and you believe that perhaps all of these creatures and things that you're finding are denizens of the Feywild. So, I'm not sure. I'm, actually, I am sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty good at this. Um, the, like, everything here is super Feywild touched. Like, at, from the little roach guys that we got, to the lab rats, to the butterfly that I got in this little pouch, all of this stuff is is super, super Feywild based. Uh, but we are not in the Feywild. No, the, the Feywild is invading this place. Yeah, that's good. That's probably the, that uh, that conjuration section brought in the, from the Feywild. That conjuration? The, the one with the butterflies in it. Yeah, the, the butterflies probably bringing things from the Feywild and growing things from the Feywild here. And apparently... The thorn is probably the the vine lady. So do we that go was... back and try to kill the butterflies? I don't want to fight the butterflies again. Uh, Let's move forward and see what else we find down here first. We know what's it. down there. B side, B side, kill the butterflies, but we keep going now. Think, I know they they scared you a little, but we'll take Let's... care of. Let's see if we find some bug spray before going back there. <laughs> no. If we do, do take a long rest, no nightmares of butterflies. Okay, okay. <laughs> Overnight. All right, so... We, we could turn the rest of this room over, but I think we're, we're good. Let's move on. Uh... What's up here? That's just the end of the corridor. Empty wall. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll take a closer look at this wall. See if there is anything funky, any passages, <clears throat> anything hiding behind it. Okay, give me a perception check, please. Uh, yeah. Net one. All right. For a total nice. of four. Yeah, there's definitely a secret door at the end of this passageway. You can see the outline of it, even. I'll grab my dagger and I'll start poking. You begin. Guys, I think I found a way. He's trying to get through it with his dagger. Oh, uh, that's just a wall. Just because you can see doesn't mean it's not here. Find a better way? I mean, I mean there's, there's, a, there's a door right here. Yeah, there's <laughs> a door over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jocelyn right. and I are standing right by. There's a, there's... I will uh, listen and then get ready to open. I will. All right. Listen to the door. Perception check as you listen okay. to the door. <clears throat> uh, Nat 20, so 25, 26, 27. All right. And like every other door, you hear <laughs> silence. Nothing. All right. All right. I'm going to open the door. All right. Open the door. Open the door. And opening the door. You can see a long chamber that apparently serves as the jail for the tower. Two of the cells contain wooden beds, and another to naught but steel manacles attached to the walls. 
there are two unmoving forms on the beds. One a human, and the other a dwarf. I will head in. Um, is the dwarf the upper one or the lower one? Uh, the lower one. Down here. The lower one. Yeah. And I'll head down to the... Well, kind of in between both of them and just... Are they following, conscious? Following suit <clears throat> into yeah, the room. Yeah, I, I, before I went in, I'd be like, there's two, two, two captives here. Come on in. The... The human that you pass by to the north is not moving, and neither is the dwarf. The human has some very grievous wounds on him. Blood has leaked all over the place. The dwarf also looks to have been stabbed. They I failed start, sacrifices? They just start banging on the drum. Rise and shine! So, Umlaut, as you begin banging on your drum, you all hear a loud... <gasps> from the dwarf who moves just slightly and cranes her head over and looks at Dulner and she gasps, help me. <clears throat> is uh, the cell door locked? It is locked. I look, I look, uh, I probably know, but since we're new here to us, does anybody do lock picking in our group? No. <laughs> All right. Looks. We're I'll good back. people. <laughs> you, you take me for a. We got a three people. Well, well, hold, so, hold, hold on, real quick. Uh, the the dwarf is the only one that woke up. The mm -hmm. other one was still out. Correct. What if, what if we just kind of, I, I could heal that guy from here, and then we can decide whether or not we let him out. Let Let's not, you know. Let's well, not cut the track before we're ready. Let's let's. Are they manacled and also locked in a cell? <clears throat> they're not. They're not. They're not manacled. They're, these these two are just locked up. Okay, they're just locked up. Omelot. Before we get before we get you know, really ahead of ourselves how about how about we just have some talk with these guys first you know we, people don't show up in jail cells just because they are oath breakers even more reason to talk nobody here likes oath breakers <clears throat> the dwarf overhearing your conversation so turns over and says i'll tell you what you want to know ask your questions just don't let me die. I got a family, you know. I'm just going to cast Healing Word on him. Okay, roll, roll, for, the, roll for the uh, healing, please. Let me know what you got. Uh, that is three plus two is five. All right, excellent. You cast your spell on her, and many of her wounds patch up, and she looks a whole lot better. She sits up on the bed, hunched over, and says, Thank you. I do appreciate it. You know, always. I was just. Always down. I was, I was being held here as a captive when all the monsters attacked, and they came in and stabbed us all. And that man over there, she points to the, the human, got himself stabbed to death. And I nearly, I nearly met my maker as well, but it's clinging on to life, as you can see. Now, if you could just get me out of here. So I can get out of this infernal tower. Insight check. What are you insight checking? What, see what are you trying to do? See if she's telling the truth or trying to pull some over her eyes. Like, like it, is she really, really attacked? Or was it, you know, potentially part of... Okay. I'll, I'll do. Make your roll. Thirty twenty. All right. So she's not lying. You you, you get the okay. sense that she's being truthful. She was locked up here. The tower was attacked, and the creatures came in and started stabbing them. I'll look at her. Why were you locked here before the tower was attacked? It was hard times. My family, I had to feed them. 
I have little ones, you know. We little ones needed to be fed, so I'm not proud of it, but I may have committed some minor thievery. Ended up here. Minor thievery. You know, uh -huh. stealing bread, that sort of thing. Just trying to feed my children, and yet that's a crime in this place. Who was it, uh, who was it that, and I'm just yelling through the bars from where I am. Who was it that did the, uh, the stabbing? Tall yes. guys, short guys, weird guys? They're, well, they're mostly weird. It's, and little ones that look like cockroaches, and other ones that kind of look like goblins. Those lab rats. I told you. <laughs> but you think I'm lying? Look, I'm not. I'm a prisoner, all right? I committed some crimes. But it's not like I was going around murdering people. Uh, Yoslin, can you help me try to find the keys for these cells or I, I have a crowbar uh, I'll look around trying to find if there are if I can find the, the keys for the cells I'll help look for keys you guys shake down that room and there are no keys in that room Dolnor uh, you said you have a crowbar? A crowbar. Set her free, please. I will try and crowbar the door open. All right, you have advantage on your athletics check to do so. I will guide myself, too, if that's okay. Sure. Eight. And then a net 20, so 20... Four, five, six, twenty-six. All right. You work at that sucker, prying at it. It takes a few minutes, but you manage to snap that thing open and get the door. And the dwarf comes forward and says, Thank you much. My name is Hilda. And I'll tell you what, for getting me out of here and, and healing me up. And he glances, she glances up to Umlaut and nods your way. Put a blade in my hand and I'll help you. I'll help you fight these monsters if any remain. Don't you have your children to go back to? Well, yeah. But if monsters are overrunning the land, don't I have to do my part to stop them before they kill my children? I'll give her my dagger. A Come dagger? On, Let's think of more like a big sword or an axe or something. Do I look like a dude with an axe? He, he, she she begins to ignore you and looks at the other companions. All right, we need a dude with an axe. I have a shovel. You want a shovel? It's not like I'm taking a dump on the ground. I need to bury it or something. All right? All I can spare is a hand axe, but... But that's better than a dagger. How about this? Give me the dagger, and then the hand axe. All okay. right. Uh, are you feeling up to this? We can bring you to the exit. Oh. I mean, if you don't need my help, I suppose I could just be on my way. I figured it was the right thing to do after you literally rescued me from certain death and healed me. But hey, I could just walk away too. Monsters are terrorizing the land. So, so Hilda, so help us. Yeah, but Hilda, you, I literally brought you back from death's door just like a few seconds ago. You right. know, you, you, you probably, you probably are going to need some rest. Do you, do you have, when you got brought in here, did you get a good look around the area? Do you know where anything was before the area got got attacked? Did you hear them talking about anything before? Uh, you know, before the stabby stab happened? Well, not really. I was sort of in the back of a closed wagon sort of thing. But after those little buggers came in here and started stabbing me, they left me for dead. I heard one of them say something about a garden to the southwest. 
garden to the southwest. Southwest here? Well, it's a garden. It's not going to be under the ground. Oh. Are you daft, lad? You got to go <laughs> upstairs. Listen, I just, I got attacked by like weird butterflies inside a cave. In, down here. Like really weird. Really weird. I know. All so, right. A garden show them down the proof. here. Yeah, like here. Let me sh let me show you real quick. <laughs> like you want to see this? Look in here. You'll see like a little butterfly. Oh, you see that little? That, that's a cute little one right there. Yeah, yeah. When it, there's like one, there was like a lot. And when I mean like a lot, it's not like five a lot. Like cover your body, blind your eyes, get oh. in your mouth a lot. Can I ask you a question? For sure. How often would you say you drink? Is it like a constant state of drunkenness? <laughs> you know, that's a personal question. Uh, oh. <laughs> but, you know, um, do, you, do you have something to drink? Oh, I did before I got arrested. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. That's okay. That's okay. But yeah, gardens down here, not out of the question. That's my point. All right. Well, thanks for clarifying, but this garden just happens to be upstairs, where mm. normal gardens can be found. Mm. Okay, okay. That, and what's good. the deal with this garden again? I don't know. Before I passed out, one of the one of the goblin sorts mentioned something about a garden to the southwest. He said something, something like command post or something like that. Hmm. Do y'all want to check the garden? Kind of sounds like the next step. This is a verification from the notes from the parchment paper. Yasmin, you seem hesitant. I mean, I don't want to go all the way up the stairs again, but if we must... I, it, you know, from everything we've been seeing, and I do not want to go deal with more butterflies, but <laughs> from everything that we've been seeing, like, that seems like a pretty good idea. Can, uh, Hilda, could, could you lead us to that garden? <laughs> Perfect timing for Luke. <laughs> We'll continue our talk first before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get okay, we'll, we'll, we'll big ass a Catch your breath. Catch your breath, Hilda. It's okay. So either we explore more here or just go quickly check the garden, see if it's real, see if there's a command post or outpost. I think before we leave, we should give those lab rats the the good the good uh, retaliation for sending us on that wild goose chase and for sticking Hilda too many times. Hmm. So Hilda, I think you're right. Hilda, after catching her breath, responds to you. <laughs> well, I heard them talk about the garden. I didn't actually see it. You want to go kill some lab rats anyway? I'd love to do some sticking on those that already stuck me. That seems fair. I like that idea. Let's head down to the uh, alchemist room. Chat is saying that Hilda has some hidden reserve bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I will open this door here. Right, you open that. No, don't want to listen to it first? No, no, there's just like every other time. There's a, oh. that one time I'm not going to listen. <laughs> All right. Can I tell you? What is super quiet? Plants. Plants. You know what else is quiet? Butterflies. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, but roaches and little goblin things aren't. Alright, so we'll head out. So we'll want to head back down to the goblin so, room. As you guys come out of that door, you do notice okay. there's another door right across the way here. 
That door looks so promising. You should take a listen. Okay. I will listen and guide myself again. You will hear the plant. Elma, help me listen. Oh yeah, good one. Um, ten. A ten. Like every other door, <laughs> you hear nothing. It's clear. You want me to look? Or do we Please, go kill someone? Yeah. Alright, let's look. Let's open up that door. Oh. You don't want a goblin reinforcements coming from behind. We, we think it's a great idea. Three of them. We could take them. All right. You open that door. And <clears throat> you can see what appears to be a smithy. A cold forge lies against one wall. Crates and sacks are scattered about. An anvil stands in the center of the large room, along with two quenching barrels and workbenches line the walls. An exciting chittering comes from within the forge, and you can see a large rat reveal itself. Stand by. This rat exits the forge, stands on its hind legs, and begins just telling you off aggressively. It's a huge rat, guys. Big rat. Are there any, like, weapons in the room? Um, there are some weapons lying around, yeah. Partially. This was a guard's okay. fortification for, you know, barracks and crap like that, so... Yeah, they use this a lot for, like, forging weapons or repairing weapons. So there are some scattered about here and there. So the, the weapons the, the, for the dwarf. Yeah. There the is... big sword. On the anvil, there is a very nice-looking maul. Ooh. We just got Hilda, a... we got some goods for you. We just got a... We just got a bane that came in from Rachel. Thank you, Rachel, for... Our bane. So that means this is going to be something beneficial for me to use against you guys. So I'm going to head over and roll for this right now to see what we come up with. Um, Thanks, Rachel. And Thanks. Rachel, Rachel, by the way, she says she said a bane to make it interesting. All right. <laughs> Not like we're already struggling. Roll that. Oh! Let's spice it up. I rolled clone monster. <laughs> a second rat comes out of the forge. So you had to bring his friends. We could take him. <laughs> Let's go. We, we probably can. Do we want to get way, weapons? Make my way in. Hey, Hilda, come on. We got some goods for you. All right, Hilda's coming up. All right, this looks amazing. A, fo a, a blacksmithy. There's going to be a lot of good stuff in here. Whoa. And as you guys begin to go into the rooms, these rats come forward. One of them leaps up onto the anvil. And as it chitters at you, you can see little white balls puff, bulge out from its fur and then pop out. Three balls pop out and immediately grow into more of these rats. Stand by. What's going on here? Well, you can now see four of these rats. They're all chittering at you, warning you. Not attacking them. I look over. So, Hilda, just remember, 
we have first dibs on anything cool. <laughs> and I'm gonna swipe at one of the rats off the one of the rats off the anvil. And you're attacking one of the rats. Yep. All right. Let's uh, roll initiative, ladies and gentlemen. Of my good roll on rats. These aren't any rats. These aren't just any rats. Yeah, they're multiplying. <laughs> they're multiplying. They are multiplying. Gremlins. Well. How many will there be? That's the question. At least How three more. How often can they multiply? All right, Jezrig, you're up. Okay. I'll just shoot an Eldritch Blast on this first one. And, damn, that's a 24 AC. That will hit. Four, nine damage. This thing takes that like a champ. Yeah! Oh. Okay, they're stronger than roaches. <laughs> and I'll take cover. Taking cover <laughs> against the rats. Dulner. <laughs> Dulner, you're up. Uh, all right. Um, Dolner is going to pull out his crossbow and take a shot at that rat as well, just to see. Because he just took it, took the Eldritch Blast like a champ. Um, a fourteen to hit. Sorry. 14 hits. All right. 1d8 plus one. Four points of damage. Ooh. Crossbow rips through his shoulder. <laughs> it's looking lightly wounded at this point. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll step forward. And that'll be my turn. Beautiful. And now the rats. <sighs> this rat and all four of its little buddies converge and swarm at Dulner. Four rats coming at you. Woo! Oh, that's a nat 20, baby! That's a nat 20. Bro, I, get, I don't think this is a good thing. I get to do double damage. And that is going to be five points of damage. <laughs> and then... And this one up here, <clears throat> little bits of fur bulge out from the thing. So. And then they pop out and more rats appear. As it also begins cloning <laughs> itself. And then they are going to... Up, squirts. 
<laughs> Let's see, 5, 10, 15, well, this will just keep it spicy. This is all Rachel's fault. No, she started it. She she cloned the monster. <laughs> well, she cloned a monster that is already able to clone itself. <laughs> <laughs> Double clone. Well it. done, Rachel. <laughs> oh, ouch. And all right, Umlau, you're up. So with that whole kind of split up, can I make out which one it was that already got hit by both... Uh, Jessrig and uh, Dulner. You would probably have to spend an action trying to figure out which rat is which at this point. Uh, biscuits. Nuts to that. I'm just going to swing. First right. one closest to me. All right. And Nine plus three, 13 to hit. That hits. Roll damage, please. Nice. Uh, four points of damage. All right, and you splatter one of those rats. <laughs> Dead. How many points did you do? Uh, just like four. Oh, just four. Okay, so it was... So, uh, splatter that one, and then it's just... Uh, okay, that, that may have been another nature-based mistake. I'm willing to own that one again. <laughs> Um, and that's Il it for me. All right, excellent. Ilda. Oh, I forgot to roll initiative four. Thank you, chat, for reminding me that Hilda gets a turn. Hilda, she had a hand axe. She will rush forward right to here. All right, you little bastards, take this! Ah! And she swings her hand axe. And she hits one of these creatures. Squirty. And she slices his head off. Ha! That's great! I'm good at this. Yaslin, you're up. Um, I'll move up here and use Thorn Whip on whichever one's closest to me. Okay. Does eight hit? Does not hit. <laughs> Dang. Do you have like, do you have more than just one set of d20s there? Because you might want to get to <laughs> Yeah. I think your dice, one, been, yeah. your dice have been pretty bad all night. <laughs> <laughs> and is that all, Yaslin? For now, yes. Okay. And top of the round, any discussion? That's correct. <laughs> I think we could take him. Do we just want to take them down in one thing, or do we just want to battle them? Do we just... They're rats. We yeah, I'm not going to use anything special on them. At first, if they had as many hit points as... <clears throat> they're rats. Nine plus five, but now they're dying at... Hilda's half-dead and splattered one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. All right, sounds good to me. All right. Um, Jezrig, you're up. Take a step here. Shoot this little guy that's standing out for a C of 14. That hits. Nine damage. And the one you hit takes that hit like a champ. It's wounded, but not that bad off. I guess my magic does not work against rats. <laughs> I'll take a step back and I'll let Donor resolve the problem. What did you attack them with again? Uh, Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Plus damage. Okay, perfect. Uh, Dulner, you're up. Dulner will take out his his warhammer and just take a swipe down on on a rat. All right. Ooh. 
Uh, that would be a 13 to hit. 13, that hits. Oh, wow. All right. A 7 plus 2, so... 9 points of damage. And that'll and splatter that's... another one. See the thing just go <clears throat> underneath the hammer. Yes. Next. All right. Next. Um, that's all my. That's awesome. My turn. So you see one of these rats to the south here. Little bulges begin to appear <sighs> on its skin, and then <laughs> begin popping out. Many more of them this time, and you soon have a total of eight of these rats in that space. They're all basically in the same space. I'm spreading them out. It makes my job easier. And then up here, we still had three of them. You Damn see it. another one of the <laughs> just bulging white balls popping out all over the place and instantly growing into more rats. So we had three of them. That will make 12 of them total. So, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Excellent. So we had 12 and then eight. I gotta keep track of that. Is there any way we can tell? Does it look like it's just the same one? popping them out over and over again. It or... does. It, there's only one of the rats that's doing the white ball popping. And it's probably, you feel it's the original one. The problem is it's hard to tell which is which because they're all intermingled all over the place. All right, that was my turn. Umlaut, you're up. This, this feels like the butterflies all over again. Uh, Yoslin's behind me. I can't really get to the door. Whatever. Fortune favors the bold. I attack. Uh, attack this one right here. Uh, that is 20 to hit. That'll hit. And that is uh, seven damage. And you squash one of them. Wait, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Not seven, five, five damage. So squashed. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm starting to not feel good about this, guys. <clears throat> Don't worry, I got this. I have an idea. Oh, I love I love hearing uh, that. I, I have a yeah. hypothesis. I've heard Story. this is great. All every time these ideas. All right. <laughs> um, that was Umlaut. Let's do Hilda. Hilda. Uh, guys, I don't know if you notice this, but they keep getting more and more and more. Uh, she takes a whack at the rats in front of her. That's a nice hit. And she squashes one of them. I'm thinking that maybe perhaps, just perhaps, it's time to get going. And Yaslin, you're up. Am I able to move through the rats? Um, you could. Where are you trying to go? Over here. Yeah, you could. You'd have to probably use a bonus action and then make an acrobatics or athletics check to try to move their, through their space. Okay. And be, be aware, too, that if you move away from them without disengaging, they you would have a lot of attacks of opportunity coming your way. I'll, I'll take the chance. All right, so give me an athletics or acrobatics as you try to get through their square. Uh, 
Ooh, seven. A seven. And unfortunately, you are not able to get through their square. I'll just try Thorn Whip again, I guess, on the closest one. All right. Thorn Whip it. 24. That hits. Four piercing damage. Oh! You hit one of these rats and it does not go down from your attack. And it was one that, now that you get a better look at it, was already wounded a little bit. You may have hit the original, but it's soon quickly hidden amongst the press of other rat bodies. And top of the round, any discussion? Uh, this is basically like mirror image. There are a bunch of fake rats that you keep pounding, and that's why you crush them easily. And there are uh, two of them that are real, that are the ones that are that we are really fighting. So I can identify the the actual one, and I'll point to you, and then we can focus our attack on the real rats. Uh, I'm just going to use my channel to divinity to take out all the rats. I mean, we, we could do that. So I will pray to my God. And any hostile within 30 feet of me will take 2d10 plus 3 damage. Or that. That's a, and that's a good plan. Basically, and if one rat it, it, is remaining, nuke. is remaining, he's the rat. So it's so. just a nuke. It's a, it's a nuke for things that are close by. It's a one-time thing per short rest. But, okay. you know. Sounds like so, you know. What's the so name of that? Plan. What's the name of that ability? It is Radiance of the Dawn. As an action, you can use Channel of Divinity and present your holy symbol, and dispel any magic darkness within thirty feet. Additionally, each hostile creature within thirty feet that doesn't have total cover must make a Con saving throw DC thirteen, or take two D ten plus three radiant damage, half damage on success. Nice. So hopefully, we'll see. I, I don't know. All right. Well, first, Jethro, you're up. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'll ready an action. And when he cleans the rats, I'll shoot the, the remaining one. Okay. Dullner? I will pull out my holy symbol and pray to Helm. And my channel divinity radiance of the dawn will come out as you see a big burst of light just shoot down from the ceiling. All right, and uh, would you roll damage for that, please? I can. Yep. Uh, what type again? of light is that? What do you mean? Which type of light? Is it sunlight? It's, it is. It's sunlight. It is. Sunlight. It's sunlight. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yaslin, cover your eyes. 13 points of damage. So for for the ones that fail, and then uh, six points of damage for the ones that fail, succeed. <clears throat> All right. As your radiant sunlight comes down, filling the room, you can see rat after rat scream as their soft white fur bursts into flames their eyes bulge and blister and pop and their bodies shrivel up and burn down into little rat corpses as a score of rats or so are burned out of existence by Helm's holy radiance that apparently doesn't like rodents. <laughs> and then see con saves what's the dc on the con save is i think 13 let me just check my spell yeah con 13 okay excellent how much damage was that again if i failed my save 
13. All right. Every single last rat is burned up and destroyed, including the original ones. They go down last, complaining and chittering. <laughs> as they're just little blackened corpses now. And we're out of combat. Villner? Could have done that sooner. Uh, I, the first round I was thinking about it, but I didn't know if it was going to kill the other one that was going to start spewing out because since we got cloned because of... who? Who's the one that cloned it on us? Rachel. Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. That was wonderful. <laughs> um, I wanted to wait till that one actually had, had already created rats before I tried to do it. And then it just got out of hand at that point. <laughs> you burned my eyes. I apologize, but you're friendly, so it shouldn't have hurt you much. <laughs> so uh, I'm not used to sunlight. Uh, hopefully so, you're okay. So you just got that spell, right? That's been like the last five minutes. You didn't have that when I was getting, <laughs> you know, swarmed by... <laughs> the butterflies earlier. Was, this well, is new. This is new, right? He's he he right, 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 the books that you found. You just got it. So when I got that parchment paper, that's when it came to me. There Helm you said, right. "You have right. this. this. This is still a. This is still a um, good hit. Yes. Okay. Well, it's it's the just in case you're all going to die. Let's do this, and we got lucky on that one." All right, so, all right, so, all right, so, Hilda, what do you want for weapons? <laughs> all right. Remember, uh, we got first dibs. <laughs> screw that! I just helped kill these rats. <laughs> she goes over you and did grabs all the work. She goes over and grabs that maul. This will do just fine. Wonderful. We'll also look around, like on the tables and stuff, see if there's any other weapons or. Anything of interest? <clears throat> um, you guys shake the room down, and besides a variety of different weapons, um, there doesn't appear to be a whole lot here of interest. No sign of vines here, right? There are some vines. They have crushed through part of the northern wall right here. Okay. And bricks lie all around. Do we check see if there's any like look around to see if there's any anomalies on the walls and stuff for potential secret doors or what have you sure um i'll roll a perception check for you guys what's your modifier uh mine is a plus five i'd love to guide myself too if that's possible okay um you look around and you do not find any secret doors okay Got some guns here. Evil rats. <laughs> All right. Do we want to go uh, have some fun with goblins? I feel like they lied to me, so yes. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> have some fun. Um. I think they are the last intelligent creatures down here. We might want to question them rather than just murder them all. Hmm. Should have grabbed some of the uh, the bug arts parts of bodies so we could like intimidate them with them, but we didn't. Just show me your dead butterfly. I'm sure that's intimidating. <laughs> I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying there, uh, there, there, Jay Swig, But uh, um, I'm really not pleased that they lied to me. Mm. Why do? What do you mean they lied to you? Well, one, they said, "Oh, the bug arts will help you," and all they did was try to stab us. And by us, I mean you, and Hilda. So. <laughs> I think that that's just, you know, rude. It's rude. It is very, very rude. So I kicked I the door open and cast Thunderwave. <laughs> All right. So you. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Open the door. And <clears throat> you can see the, the, the dust goblins turn towards you as you kick the door open. Oh, I'm back again. Oh. Hammer on the drum. And you're casting a spell? <laughs> All right. Well, let's roll initiative for it. Those guys come off. We'll throw these guys up there. Okay, then. My poor innocent dust goblins. <laughs> It would be a shame if we got a Bane right now. Oh yeah, if we could get a Bane <laughs> so I could duplicate and clone some of these guys, that would be awesome. Alright, everybody got your initiative updated? All right. Umlaut, you, you're up first, as luck would have it. So this is a thunder wave. Thunder wave. Uh, I rolled the 2d8 in. Got it. Uh, roll 20 there. Yeah. So I just walk in. What's... I don't like buyers. Boom. What's my DC for this? Uh, DC is going to be 12. All right. Oh, good. there's two nat ones on my first rolls. <laughs> and also a failure. How much damage? 11? So you slam your thunder wave in the middle of that room and the waves of energy rip through these three goblins, tearing them apart, throwing them against the walls. Their bodies are all bruised and battered and shredded, shredded because all of these alchemical equipment as well got blasted. Glass goes flying, ripping through their flesh. Beakers shatter, chemicals and liquid all over the place. There's pieces of metal as well. It's like a shrapnel bomb. It just goes off. And when the glass shards and pieces of metal settle to the ground, you have naught but three blasted bodies of dust golems, quite dead. And if their faces weren't just complete messes of blood and bone, you might notice looks of shock on their faces as they barely saw what hit them. And we can you, drop out of combat now. Did you just <laughs> got that now? Didn't you have that when Yoslin was being terrorized by butterflies? <laughs> Listen, baby, you, you got to make an entrance. You, you got to <laughs> give the crowd what they want. And sometimes you just gotta, you gotta show up with a bang. After you did that, did you just mic drop it? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm done. Um, okay, so we have basically walked all over this place. We murderized everything and we still have a garden to visit. Can we make a quick stop just to gather our strength before pushing forward? Do you want to do that now or do you want to do that after we... Because uh, I'm not against that, but do you want to do that now or do you want to do that after searching the room? Uh, we can search the room, check this weird box check. here, and then chill for a short time just so Yoslin can gather her strength and we can feel better about ourselves. I'm okay with that. 
Me too. We could even go down to the um, room with the couches. Just chill. I, I like how you're thinking. Yeah. It's a nice little room. Okay. <clears throat> so what are you doing in this room? Checking this box. All right. So you open that trunk up. I will. All right. You with open- major hand. Okay, you open it with Mage Hand, and looking inside, you can see that there is a layer of empty vials separated, and then below these empty vials, there is a cloth. So these vials are very thin, right? So there's clearly more in here, but all you can see is a layer of vials and a cloth. I'll move the vials away and carefully pull the cloth up. And then you pull the cloth away, and there's no, there's one more layer of vials with a cloth beneath it. Also empty? Yep. I'll just start tossing the vials, and I'll pull the cloth. All right, so you're now just kind of ripping through it quickly. <laughs> All right. Even, even then, it takes you about five minutes of tearing through <laughs> all of these. until And there's glass shattering behind you, which who cares, right? Because this lab is destroyed anyway. Finally, at the very, very bottom, there's a bunch of empty vials, but there are also two vials that are not empty, and they contain a green liquid. Smell it. You smell it. Actually, smell it. I won't put my nose on top of it. There is an odor to the liquid. What type of odor? It smells uh, quite repugnant. Okay. Both, I, I assume. Okay, this is what they are working on. Anyone can try to figure out what this is? And I just kind of make my way into the room. Uh, does it look magic or n- not magic? It looks disgusting. I can, I can ritual cast detect magic. It'll take ten minutes. If you guys are okay with that. Um, uh, haven't you checked this room for magic? Well, actually, you're right. Cause there's nothing glue. Um, I'll, was I'll take from that chest before. Is there a lead lining inside the trunk? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Probably not. No, there wasn't. Like, I'm not good uh, with plants, so if it's not magic, though, Yaslin, that's kind of your bag, right? <laughs> I mean, plants, sure, but not potions or chemistry. Uh, I, I don't think this is potion. This might be some something extracted from plants. Can take a look, please? Pretty please? Okay. I'll go over and look at it. <clears throat> so, you're looking at them. It's green <laughs> liquid and vials. You can taste it. Are you, you going to try to identify them, Yaslin? And if yeah. so, is this going to be what kind of what kind of methodology you're using to identify these? Are we taking sips? Are we simply examining? Um, I'll give it a whiff and try to see if I can smell it. I guess. Okay. Um, give me a nature check with disadvantage as you smell it. Five. Doesn't smell good, but you still don't know what it is. Should I try to taste it, guys? Think that's a good idea? Yes. Your pinky should be enough. Let me take, let me try that. I'm (laughs) I'm pretty good with poison. Someone else. I'll I'll try it. I'm pretty good in case it is poisonous. Okay. Uh, So I'll dip my finger in and then taste. Oh, right. You dip your finger in and you taste it. Oh, my gosh. This is the most disgusting crap. This is like, 
This this reminds me of your days when they were like teaching you to ferment your own beer and ale and stuff like that. And then the, the goof offs in class would screw it up royally. They'd put like wrong quantities of stuff in it. And the final result was just the most disgusting garbage in the world. This is worse than that. All right. <laughs> However, you do notice that a wound, a little scratch you had taken in a fight, heals up on your arm. You believe that these are healing potions. In fact, these are pretty potent healing potions. These would be potions of superior healing, both of them. Okay. Uh, guys, these are nothing. Um, <laughs> I'll just show they're poison. So no, um, yeah, I'll tell them that they're these are healing potions. Um, uh, how to do? Well, who wants them? We can. I know we're all hurt, but if we're gonna long Please. rest, let's see how we're doing after that, and then um, give you them up. I would say. You should hold one of them. Okay. And I can ha hold the other one. Not for myself, but it's easy for me to, because I'm always in the back. It's easy for me to reach whoever needs and give it. <clears throat> but I'm fine with that. Okay. Let's, that. let's take our. our I, I would personally rather you leave the healing potions behind because it makes my job easier. I know. Let's not do that. Let's keep them. <laughs> Don't right. worry. So you guys stash the healing potions and you're going off to take a short rest, it sounds like. Yeah. All right. You head off to the lounge, if I remember correctly. Proceed with a short rest. Search the uh, couple of the goblins before we head out to the lounge i just want to see if they've got anything on them sure um anything that would point us towards mm -hmm. next directions yeah. maybe a map to where that garden is you look the goblins over and what you notice is they had all three of them had vials and little bandoliers under the vests that they were wearing and all of these vials were shattered and broken when they were murdered and you can see green liquid leaking out all over their chests um they have weapons and stuff um short swords and uh crossbows on them uh but Let's see if hilda wants a short sword <laughs> or any of the yeah hilda will, hilda will take one of them she likes her maul but she'll take one just as a spare weapon okay um not much yeah. else of value on these dust goblins though Okay, just just wanted to see if there was anything else. All right, so you guys head off to the lounge to take your short rest. It passes uneventfully. Yeah. Please feel free to use hit dice to get hit points back and other short resty stuff. So I get back one spell slot. So, so I'm actually I'm while we're doing the short rest, I'm gonna do song of rest. So I'm gonna, just gonna kind of drum us out a little song while we're doing the short rest, um, and then you can gain an extra one d six for uh, hit points. Cool. Thank you. Um. So we should be going to this garden. How do you want to approach that? I don't even know where the garden is. He said to the it... southwest, so we just go up the stairs and go southwest. Yeah. Until we find some garden. Basically. I've heard worse plans. Well, we can take a 
a good look at what we can see and maybe we'll see a cherry tree or something. But probably we will end up meeting the the foreign lady. And I think we should have a plan. I think the um Thorn lady should... is Thorn. Seems we're poetic, for. right? It does. Alright, so did I hear you guys are heading off to look for the garden? Yep. Yeah. Okay, excellent. You guys before, before we do, um Felnar is going to cast aid mm -hmm. and uh add five to the maximum hit points for Delnar, uh Armalot and Yoslin. So you guys can now make your maximum hit points up five points. So you're keeping me out of this just because I'm a drow. I, nope. I get it. I get drow. it. I get it. I get That's it. Why? <laughs> because I get you're, it. you were going to stand back. And Bec we are because I'm healers. a drow. No, we could all heal you and get you all better. <laughs> so I get an extra five hit points? Five hit points to your max. Yep. Nice. All right. And you guys <clears throat> set out from this underground compound, ascend the stairs, and head off to the southwest in hopes of finding this garden. And indeed you do find a garden off in the distance as you travel. I'm going to I'm gonna reveal it on the map so you can see it. I'm not going to put your minis on there yet, just because um you can see this from a little bit of a distance off before you're actually stepping on there. Yeah. That right there, the garden. And what you can see is a low stone wall topped by a rusting metal lattice forms a barrier around what was once a magnificent garden. However, it is now a twisted, dying image of its former self. Several large trees stand about, their leaves blackened, shriveled, and mostly fallen to the ground. Flower beds surrounding the trees are choked out with weeds and spiky growths. The flowers themselves are but diseased caricatures now. A well stands in the middle of the garden, but judging from the dry, arid landscape, the well must surely have gone dry. And, among it all, thick, thorny vines weave and wander, wrapping their tendrils about trees, walls, and well in a figurative, or perhaps literal, attempt to leech all vitality from the garden. So you're, we're going to say your guys are probably about 100 yards off, looking down on this garden. I think we found it. A pretty sad garden. Do you think it's above the the crystal for the butterflies? Probably not. It was seemed like it would be distance wise above no. the crystals. No. no. It's farther yeah. away than that. Farther away? Yeah. Well, let's go check it out. Uh, when we're about 30 yards from the, the garden, can I try to shoot an Eldritch Blast at one of the vines? Sure. You shoot one of the vines and blast a bit of it apart. Do we see any reaction from it? Okay. We could have poked them. So, let's get closer. Um, <clears throat> any animal sounds? 
Stand by. Let me get your tokens. Where'd Hilda go? Lost Hilda. Oh. No, Hilda's here. I lost Umlaut. Alright, I got I got her. Alright, um, you guys approach the garden, and it is very quiet. No animal sounds or anything. The, the entire landscape is arid and dry. You don't see any wildlife about. And as you approach the garden, a tittering, high-pitched laughter fills the air. And an alluring female, clad in vines, and leaves steps out from within the trunk of a nearby tree and I will put her token on the map so you can see her Whee. greetings adventurers she says with a mischievous smile splayed across her plump lips have you come to bask in the greatness of my glory Is your name Thorn? My name is Ravene. Some call me the Thorn. Guys, I think she's who we're looking for. Ravene, what are you trying to do? You're healing this place. Not exactly. You see, <clears throat> I have been sent by the Sovereign. Because the people of this land, the Oathbreakers, have desecrated a decade-old oath. And now they refuse to pay that which they promised. We have come to reap a penance, exact a revenge of sorts, to extract a tithe upon this land, upon the people that you know as Winvalians, these oath breakers, these foul creatures who would take from my master's master in their time of need and then deny him what is his. And so what? leeching what? the life and vitality from this land is but a small thing, a small act of retribution for people who so deeply deserve it. What was the oath that everyone supposedly broke? A tithe of tenth of all the bountiful profits of the land. But they refused to hand over when my master's master requested it. Ten years of bounty. Ten years of crops to a people that were on the verge of starvation. And then, after a decade of bounty, a decade of opulent living, he asks for but a tenth. A tenth and they said no and this this wonderful gift is what I bring okay um, sounds sounds fair exactly ha haven't you taken m more than that tenth already mm -hmm. well you know Things are measured differently where I come from. Revenge is almost always a, a factor of a factor multiplied several times over and heaped one hand upon the other until nothing but sorrow, tears, and blood remains. So basically, it's your now punishing them all we requested was a tenth of what they had so and now more we shall until... take it all oh so so you're not going to be happy until you have everything i am simply a servant a servant of my master's master Who okay, is that master? So... I serve the Sovereign. Hmm. 
Yeah, this is some fake contract that now they be, they turn into a jury, so that's not kind. Can't we renegotiate the terms of this deal? Oh, absolutely. Bring me everything that was produced in this land beginning 10 years ago till now. Heap it up in a pile and we shall call it square. That sounds abusive. Hmm. Well, to filthy oath breakers, you should expect nothing less. Yeah. No, that sounds so much. But that's not your decision to make, is it? Whose decision would it be? Uh, the master of her master. Ah, yes. No, I must admit, <clears throat> I enjoyed having the moment to expound, to tell you all of all the wonderful things that we are about. This was my monologue of sorts, more of a dialogue, but to understand. But now I grow tired and weary of this. And I can see that you're not going to just leave us be, but you're going to continue meddling. Meddling, meddling. Surely the Oathbreakers sent you. That marshal up in her sky of iron sent you. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sew your lips shut so that your mouths may never enter into an oath to break again. I'll seal your eyes shut so that you cannot even see your own misery. And then I'll seal your ears so you can't hear your own weeping. But your nose I will leave open, for you shall not suffocate, but you shall smell your own death and destruction. A little aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> now, nah, baby, I need these for work. Thunderclap. <laughs> <laughs> and she gestures and she says, Minions, destroy them. And I need everyone to roll initiative. Oh. No. <laughs> uh, Yaslin, please take this one. You're did needy. You, did you, you roll, die? Did you I roll even roll stole roll. my husband's dice, <laughs> and they're not helping. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, you that's what happens when you touch why. other people's dice. <laughs> Right. Okay. I love that Umlaut said out Thunder Wave and they just rolled insanely high. No, I had uh, a thunderclap because thunderclap was like mm, nope, I need I need I need my fingers, I need my, my voice. <laughs> I need all those things to work. <laughs> Bards don't work without all of those things. Oh my gosh, you guys rolled horribly. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just I looked up. Yeah. I was just like, okay, oh. where am I going? Oh man, I'm like, that's <laughs> not good, you guys. Nope. Wow. Okay. Well, this will be short. <laughs> I might actually keep this one shot to four hours. <laughs> actually, I'll be under. <laughs> yeah. I refuse to die. <laughs> can do um, this, guys. You guys see some you shifting. Oops. Oh, crap. Well,
There is some shifting in the trees to the north and over here to the south. And you can see little stick-like figures. Its eyes gleaming like, like polished walnuts. Its sly smile seeming oddly placed on its small body covered in spikes and thorns. And these are tiny, tiny little vaguely humanoid figures that are stirring on these trees. The creature's waist is no thicker than a clenched fist, and its sinuous arms are no wider than a finger, but twice the length of its body. And these creatures to the north and south <clears throat> open up their mouths, and you can see long thorns <clears throat> emerge from their mouths, and then you <clears throat> as they spit these thorns out across the distance. One at Dulner. <clears throat> which will miss horribly. And the other one spits it at Jezrig. Which is a critical hit. Hot dog. That's what I'm Hot talking dog. about. Woo! Wee! It's to be in the back. Um, Nine points of piercing damage, Jezrig. As that hits you. Okay. And, and Umlaut, you're up. And these creatures, by the way, are probably about 15 feet up in the branches of these trees. Okay. Um... No one likes dying with unused spell slots. Uh, <laughs> Thunderwave at uh, uh, Thorn at second level. All right. What's my DC? Uh, 12. 12! Oh, yay! 11. All right, uh, 3d8, and they're in uh, roll 20. Okay, gotcha, so fine, okay. So your thunder wave blasts her, and you can see the her vines and thorn clothing flutters a little bit, and she looks around. What, what was that? It's a tickle spell. <laughs> That's all I got, baby. Oh, I gotta get Hilda on the initiative. I forgot. I always forget about NPCs. Uh, oh, she rolled like a champ. Wow. <laughs> That's my girl. There you Knew go. There was a reason to keep you around. <laughs> I got a nat one on her initiative. <laughs> you, you have two Hildas on our. Oh, oh, whoops. Okay, that, that's an old one. That was an old one. There we go. Beautiful. Well done, Umlaut. Oh. Uh, by the way, Goliath Cleric in chat is asking how they're holding up. We have just entered into the final boss fight. That's all we know thus far. Uh, that That's all I have. Excellent. And then you guys can see something else stirring in the branches of the trees. And these creatures... resemble dragonflies. They're very tiny, but they have three pairs of gossamer wings and a body made from what appears to be splintered wood. Flashes of bright color run along their bodies as they zip towards you. And let me move to the right layer. Whee! And all right, yes. So, Umlaut, this one zips at you rapidly. <clears throat> and its tail, you can see that its tail has a super sharp barb on the end of it. And that barb comes right at your face. If you were to take a guess, it's coming at your mouth. Oh, that's a bad roll. And it starts stabbing at your mouth and you're moving your head side to side, able to evade it. 
and let's see. This one right here zips down toward Dulner, and its little needle tail begins stabbing at your mouth. It's cocked. That's low roll. You're also moving your head around and it's jabbing at you. This thing is fluttering in front of you, unable to stab you or do whatever it's trying to do. And Ravenay's turn. Oh, nice. We'll have to do that in a second. Ravenay steps into this tree and reappears in this tree up here. Only she's about 15 feet in the air, standing on one of the limbs of the tree. And then, as she looks down at you all, she smiles and says, Oathbreakers! Oathbreakers one and all! And then... She gestures at Yaslin and begins spell casting. There's nobody with counter spell in this group. They're at third level? Okay. Oh, the Not good point. Good point. All right. <laughs> Silvery barbs. <laughs> All right. She begins the spell casting. And Yaslin, I need you to make a saving throw. Stand by one moment as I. Get the type. Probably a charisma save. Um. Dun, 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 dun. Wisdom save. Yaslin, please make a wisdom save for me. Oh. 15. Oh! Ugh. That is a failure. And you can feel magic subtle over you. And Revenue whispers, Yaslin. Yaslin, the dwarf's armor is cursed. It will kill him if you don't get it off. Quickly now, take his armor off before he dies. And you can feel a magical compulsion settle over you. And you are now compelled to remove the armor from Dulner, which will take like 10 minutes or so. <laughs> oh, God. Um... So let's get a little indicator on you. And that was her turn. Dulner, your turn. Just a, a quick question. Measuring wise here, it's 30 feet, but is it actually lower, uh, further? Oh, it's just 30 feet. I don't I don't okay. do hypotenuses and stuff. It's just 30 okay. feet. <laughs> just making sure. Just making sure. I didn't know if I had to get out my slide rule. And, no, we're good. Uh, we're, I make it easy. <laughs> All right, so I... Uh, uh, Dolner is going to, yet again, pull out his holy symbol and pray to Helm and do the same channel of the divinity, Radiance of the Dawn. All um, right. To where it's a DC 13 con save and anything within 30 feet will take um, 3d10 plus 3 radiant damage Ooh. or half damage on success. All right. Um, what, what, what was the DC on the con save? Uh, 13. Okay, and could you roll the damage for me, please? Sure. Tens. Oh, horrible damage. Uh, for seven. Seven. Oh, baby. Yeah. yeah. Was it DC 10? I rolled a three to one. DC 13. 13, okay. Con. Yeah. Con. All right. There goes the nuke option, guys. Sorry, it's a bad roll. Okay, you tried. <laughs> it's the thought that matters. <laughs> You're just going to take off my armor anyway. Yeah, unfortunately.
All right, your radiant energy blasts out around you, tearing through the enemies. And to your utter shock and surprise, the thorn, these two stick men on the trees look to have been barely phased by it, almost completely unwounded. Now the two little dragonfly guys, however, do appear to be lightly wounded after your blaze of glory. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. And have it show up uh, here. Ooh. 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 Ha! Hold on a second. Sure. Do you have a Spiritual Weapon? Or no? I have Counterspell. <laughs> Ra Ravene gestures with her hands, says a few words, and your spell fizzles out. <laughs> is that all sir and it's all I got Yaslin I'm gonna look to my dwarf friend with fear your armor it's cursed you gotta take it off here let me help you and I'll start reaching for his armor what are you thinking I'm not cursed mm -hmm. Your armor is cursed, not you. Oh, shake it off. You're under a spell. So gonna... does any of my armor come off? Or does it we have to do like a contest? So it's going to take 10 minutes. It takes 10 minutes to remove armor. I think you're, right. yeah, you're bringing medium armor. So she's going to have to work on it for the next 10 minutes. Um, If you want to fight back against her on each of your turns, I suppose... Well, it would, it would be on your turns. It would just be, you can make a check in general. So yeah, we can make a contested thing where Yaslin would probably be making either a acrobatics or athletics check. And then Dulner, you could make either of those as well. And then over the next 10 minutes, we can just keep a tally of those. Sure. All right, I'll roll by athletics. Okay. All real acrobatics. <sighs> I got a 12. I got a 9. <laughs> <clears throat> Undid one of the straps in the back. Yes. <laughs> you have made it's... a little bit of progress, Yaslin, against taking his armor off. Well done. And is that your turn? Yep. <laughs> All right. And yes, Rig. I'll reach for some feathers. Oh, look, Ravene, do you want to see what tickles? Tasha, he just left her. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is going to incapacitate me, which means I'll lose my concentration. That's not nice. Oh, what's my what kind of save is it? And what's the DC? Uh it's wisdom 13. And I use my counter spell. Oh, what a jerk. What a jerk. <laughs> Do I have on spiritual weapon? You said wisdom DC 13? Yeah. Please. Please. <laughs> I cannot be. <laughs> and she breaks out into laughter, almost falls out of the tree, manages to grab a branch as she's dangling, just laughing and laughing and laughing. And I'm going to look up Tasha's, but I'm pretty sure that causes her to lose her concentration. Um, she's incapacitated. Um... I think being incapacitated yeah. removes uh, concentration. Yeah, I'm I'm sure it does. All right, and she drops the concentration, and Yaslin, you're no longer compelled. Take off the dwarf's armor, the big turd. Deez. Just take two steps back. 
so if she if she takes damage, she could throw do another saving throw, right? Um, if she takes damage or at the end of her end of, end of her turn, okay. but in the meantime, there are these thorns in our side that we have to deal, <laughs> and that's my turn. Well, that's we just counter spell on spiritual weapon. I was so happy when she did that. <laughs> All right. Well done. But I'm not through yet. That was Yesrig. All right, Hilda. Hilda is going to come over here and whack at one of these dragonfly things. All right, you think you could just come up here and start hurt me friends, do you? And she misses horribly. All right, suppose you can. And top of the round, feel free to discuss. Um, we need to kill the the thorns, the the so three things, guys. The ads. yeah. The things in the tree shooting at us. Exactly. They they hurt really bad. At least until. <laughs> Thorn stops laughing. Yeah. Focus fire on one until it's dead, then focus fire on the next. That's my. That's the best bet. Yeah, I'm. I'm here for that. I'm gonna try to kind of stock up and not use my spells on those guys, just in case she wakes up again. Or when she. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Turn. The little, the little stick guys in the trees. Each of them once again grows a spine out of its little mouth and bleh, belches it at you. One goes flying at Umlaut. <clears throat> Misses you completely. The other one goes flying at Dulner. Also misses you completely. Umlau, you're up. All right, I'm going to uh, take a swing at the kind of firefly creature just above uh, where I am. Uh, that is... Fourteen to hit. That hits. All right. Four points of damage. That'll do it. Would you like to describe this? I just kind of see Tasha laughing over in the background. And go. Oh, oh, oh! That's good. I wonder what's so funny. Ha! And you squash that bug. Any movement? Uh, I'm gonna bring myself around oh this could be a mistake or yeah who cares uh bring myself up to this uh so creature up here there's a garden wall right there so it would take 5 10 15 20 25 feet of movement to get there so you're good I, yeah i got 30 all righty and this <clears throat> dragonfly guy here begins well <clears throat> couldn't get it dulner last time let's go to go after yaslin it begins stabbing. Wait a second, Goslin. Mm. No, we're gonna go. We're gonna go with Dul Dulner. I have reasons. It begins stabbing its little barbed tail at Dulner's mouth once again. And. Your armor class is 17. That is going to miss you yet again. Ravene is clinging to the branches, laughing hysterically. <laughs> you pitiful fools! Pitiful fools! <laughs> and I'm making her new wisdom save. Oh! 
What's the DC? 13. 13. She snaps out of it, steadies herself on the branch trees and says, You fools. You've now angered me. And Yezreg, you're no longer concentrating. And that was the end of her turn. Dulner, you're up. Uh, Dulner is going to move uh, 10 feet up here. As you move away from that yep. dragonfly, you'd be provoking. Yep, I'll All right. provoke. I mean, because right. uh, a range attack would be a disadvantage with him right next to me, correct? That's correct. Yeah, so I will move All right, just it's, so I can do it right. It stabs its little barbed tail at you. There it is, baby. Its little barbed tail begins stabbing all around your mouth. You take one point of piercing damage, and you find that your mouth has been sewn shut. Oh, that is cool. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Um. Now what would you like to do? Well, now I can't. Oh, yeah, verbal components are off the table for you. Now can... Can I use an action to cut myself free from that? Like with my hand axe? I... You can use an action to attempt to cut yourself free. Yes. Like try and yep. get my mouth free again. Yep. All right, I'll so do that with my hand axe. Okay, you start going at that. And... As you begin slicing it back and forth, you take one point of damage. And you have made good progress, but you haven't quite opened your mouth yet. You feel like it's going to take you another action on your next turn to do so. Could I use my bonus action for that or no? It takes a full action. Full action. And it takes okay. two full actions to open your mouth up. All right. So then at that, I'm going to then continue on instead of 10, 15, 20, 25, get as close to her as I can. All right. And she is 15 feet up in the tree, just as yep, a reminder. that's fine. You're at the base of the tree now, and Yaslin, you are no longer compelled to take the dwarf's armor off. What would you like to do? I'm gonna call to Dolny and be like, hey, one of your straps are undone. And then I'm gonna cast Moonbeam on top of this guy. Ooh, Moonbeam. All right. So I'll put a red marker on your token to indicate that you're concentrating on that. And what kind of save am I making here? Or is this at the end of my turn? How does this work again? It'll be at the beginning of its turn. When it starts in the area. Yes. And then I'm gonna bonus action um, wild shape into a dire wolf. All right, dire wolf. Give me one second. Oh, that's a horrible looking wolf. Oh, there we go. That'll work. Eee. Let me. Fair wolf. Controlled by. All right, there we go. And. You are concentrating on that in your wolf form. I'm just gonna move, place your token. All right, there we go. You have transformed into a dire wolf. And then I'm going to move into the area. Let's go there. 
and that circle is going to represent your moon beam. All right, excellent. All set. Yep, that'll be it for my turn. Okay, Jezrig. I will look at this guy and I will say, "You're the ugliest bonsai I've ever seen," and I'll cast vicious mockery on him. What kind of save is that? Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving. DC thirteen. Whew. That's a failure. Okay. That will be four points of damage. Ow. And they have disadvantage on their next attack. Okay. Remind me when that happens, please, because I'll forget. Yeah. And I'll move here and I'll duck behind the the wall. All right, excellent. And that was Yezrig. <clears throat> Hilda's turn. All right. Hilda is going to go over to this dragonfly right below her and take a swing at it with her big hammer. That's a two, so she shall miss horribly. She hits the garden wall, though, knocks some bricks loose. Oh, that's these things are kind of hard to hit here, just dodging around. And top of the round, any discussion? We're doing good progress, guys. Slowly but surely. Let's kill all. Let's finish the minions so we can focus on Raveny. We're, we're all pretty healthy, right? Like, yeah. Overall? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> this guy up here, the stick guy, is starting in the moonbeam. So. I need to make some sort of save here. Constitution save? Yes, it's right. a con save. DC? 13. All right. Um, all right, how much damage? Roll that, please. 14. Radiant damage. Yowzers. <laughs> That's a lot. And he gets blasted a little bit by that does not appear too happy he's now looking lightly wounded and he is going to drop down out of that tree clamber down from branch to branch until he's adjacent to umlaut and then he launches himself at you two claws little stick claws coming out and as his body comes at you, Umlaut, you can see that it's covered with thorny spines all over it. And that is a nat 20 right there. With disadvantage? Oh. He is disadvantage. <laughs> all right, well then I'll, I'll, take a six, I'll take a six on that first one, and then the second attack will be a straight roll. Oh, baby misses you on that attack as well and he as he gathers himself back standing on a little branch he snarls at you and then you clinky. this one right here is going to grow out another spine from its mouth and then it'll spit it over at Hilda who had no armor on so her armor class is going to be very bad. That. Oh, that's a hit on Hilda. Or. Yeeshk. Yeeshk. That little spine goes right into Hilda's neck. Blood begins leaking out. Hilda wobbles for a moment and then crashes down to the ground. She's not gonna make it. Umlaut, you're up. All right, uh, I'm gonna try casting sleep on Thorn. Sleep. So five, uh, five D six. I believe so. 5d8. 5d8, okay. 
five. I'll just put that in roll 20 also to save time. Okay. You cast your spell on her, and she looks down, smirks. My dear, I am Fae. I cannot be affected by such paltry spells. You just look tired, honey. I'm just trying to help you out. Ah, Get some I had sleep. my beauty sleep earlier. It is now time for revenge. And she's unaffected by your spell. Because they... Oh, I wasted that. Sorry, everyone. And is that all, sir? <clears throat> yes. All right. That'll be all for me. The remaining dragonfly zips over to Yezrig and its little barbed tail begins stabbing around your mouth. Oh! You manage to ward the thing off and it does not sew your mouth shut. And Ravene standing up in the tree. <clears throat> it's probably time to do something nasty to you all. <clears throat> ah, that's the perfect spell for a perfect time. Let's pull this up and see how this works. As she begins casting, she calls out, thorns, thorns, thorns in the wall. Let's make a thorny wall to surround them all. And let's see, how big can I make this thing? 20 foot Ooh. diameter. <laughs> Up to 20 feet high, five feet thick. <laughs> 20 feet diameter? I can make this thing huge. That, right. that, you're doing 20 feet radius. You're doing 20 feet radius. It's oh, well, I'm just going to change this spell and how it works, baby. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That looks, the about, GM, it's <laughs> that looks about right. Well, we're going to put this right there. Zoop. Thorns grow up in a wall surrounding Umlaut and the dire wolf. And these thor this thorn wall is 20 feet tall. And it's literally like vines and thorns that completely obscures sight too, so you can't see through it. And that is a concentration, I'm sure. Yes. Excellent. Now that we've sealed them off, we can pick off the rest. And Dulner, you're up. Your mouth is still sealed shut. Oh, I have to use my action to try and get the rest of it off. All right, you do so and you take one point of damage as you finally cut through and open your mouth back up. Okay. That's all I got right now. All right, you're going to stay put on the ground? I am going to stay put on the ground. All um, right. Yeah, I'm not going to climb the tree yet. Okay. Yaslin, it is your turn. You are inside the wall of Thor. I'm gonna try to escape it. Okay, how would you like I to can. go about how would you like to go about doing that? Can I climb over it or you could really? attempt to climb over it, but you'd be well in wolf form, very difficult. Dogs really can't climb. Um you could you could try to push your way through the wall too. It's very dense, but you probably could push your way through. It's just as a reminder, it's a wall of thorns, covered with thorns. So this would be at no small risk to your own personal welfare. I'll do it. I'll try to push through the thorns and end on this okay. side. All right, you begin pushing your way through the thorns. Um, 
So for every one foot through the wall, it takes four feet of movement. It's five feet. So it'll take 20 feet of movement, if I did the math right, to get through the wall. And as you begin pushing through the wall, please make a dexterity saving throw. I can give you some inspiration on that if you need it. Are, so what's going on? Are you twenty-one? Are you? Are you oh. Okay. Oh, uh, that is a success. You'll take half damage. Stand by. Alright, so you'll take half of 27, which would be uh, 13 points of damage. And then that would be to your wolf form. And then I need you to make a constitution save using your wolf's statistics. 20. You got a 20? Okay, so you maintain your concentration on your spell. And... You did get through the wall, so I don't know where you were trying to go. It took 20 feet of movement to go through the wall, but where would you like to end up? Right there? Okay? Yes. Alright, and you are out of the wall with 20 feet of movement. And then I'll use the rest of my movement to come over here. Alrighty. You're now adjacent to that little stick guy who easily stayed inside your moonbeam. I don't know why. <laughs> and that'll be it. All right. And yes, Ring, you're up. Well, Bug, who is the real me? I'll cast mirror image. All right. So now there are four draw ladies standing here. I put little colored markers on your token to show how many mirror <laughs> images are around you. Thank you. And that's my turn. All right, beautiful. Hilda is out for the count. Top of the round, any discussion? We have to break her concentration. Ranged attack on her, please. Yeah, I think we just need to start focusing on her instead of the other ones. Yeah. Like we're we're barely putting a dent on anybody else. The only ones that uh, are a real problem are those fireflies. Umlaut, do you have any ranged attack? Uh, a few. Okay, my suggestion. I still do got it a little bit left in the tank. But do not it much. after her. I gotta so get out cannot... of this thorn wall. Don't you have like something like vicious mockery? I have to see her. Okay. Twenty foot high. I can't. I can't see her through the thorn wall at all. I got to get out of the thorn wall first. Okay. So yeah. The only thing I was going to say is that do it after her round. So, but what can you do? Yeah, it's just we. I've got to try to beat my way out of this thorn wall before I can do anything. All right, <clears throat> I'm up. This little stick guy over here, his only good target really is Dulner. So he will grow out a little thorny projectile and spit it out toward Dulner. Hey, that might have hit him. Plus five. That is a hit. Dulner. Six points of piercing damage. If only that one buckle on your armor hadn't been undone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yoslin. <laughs> and this one right here is starting its turn in the moonbeam. Please burn. What is what am I doing here? Uh, it's a con save. Con save. 
And I failed. How much damage? 11 this time. Jeez. And my moron is good gravy. Well, he's going to get out of the moonbeam. He's going to hop over to a branch over here. And then he's going to attack the dire wolf. It's standing right next to him. He launches himself down at you. Thorny little body. Yeah! Oh, baby. That is a nat 20 and a high roll. So let me do some damage calculations here. Um, we have 16 points of piercing damage. And nice. you are you are grappled by this creature. As it clings to you. Its thorns are sticking into your hide as it grabs a hold of you. <clears throat> and as its thorns stick into you, you take another two piercing damage. Wow. And I need two constitute no wait, sorry, three constitution saving throws from you, please. For your concentration on your spell. The first one is sixteen. Good. Second one is eleven. Still good. The last one is a ten. A ten, still good. <clears throat> Just barely. <laughs> you hold on to your moonbeam. And that was that dude and that dude. Umlaut, you're up. All right. Is there any way that I can just start beating my way through this vine with my mace? You want to just start hacking at it? Just start hacking away at it with my mace to try to get my way out. Um. Yeah, you can start attacking it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It's a five feet thick wall of thorns and vines okay but any do i have any type of guess of how long that'll take me It'll, it's gonna take with a mace yeah it's gonna take yeah. some time what you really need is an axe yeah i got one of those you don't got uh, one of those no okay so yeah i mean give me some uh attack rolls and damage <sighs> yeah uh or One second. So if I do thunderclap at it, does that kind of blow it out since thunderclap creates like a, a, a sound? I mean, it'll damage shockwave. It'll damage it. It would cause damage to it. It still cause damage to it. Yeah, I mean, you you will you won't know if something's gonna completely work until you actually do it. Well, let me just go for thunderclap then at it. Okay. Um. What's the saving throw and the damage for that? Uh, 1d6 on the damage and the saving throws a con of 12. Okay. How much damage? It is four points of damage. All right, you blast a little bit of the thorns away in front of you. Make a tiny bit of progress on that wall. And that was your action? Yeah, that's it. That's all I can do. All right. And the little dragonfly is coming at Yezrig. Now, I have to roll to see which of your guys I target. So I'm rolling a d20. To get the real you, yeah. I have to get a 13 or above, I think. Uh, if uh, You must roll a 6 or higher to change the target the the target so anything above a six i can change the target because i roll okay okay go ahead and it's a four so i get the real you you get the real me okay now i'm gonna actually roll my attack roll though to see if i hit oh that's close 
Let's see if that's gonna be a hit. And your armor class is... That is a hit, 13. sir. This thing gets you and sews your mouth up. <sighs> Not good. And Ravine, up in the trees. Hmm. Let us see what I have here. Ooh, that's a nice spell. Let's try that spell right there. She gestures with her hands, says a few arcane words, and three blue missiles <clears throat> fly down at you, Dulner. Um, before, before, it's a roll attack? No, it's not, a, I'm not, it's not an attack roll. Oh, it's a save. It's not even a save. There are three magic missiles that unerringly oh, strike your magic strike missiles. your target. Yeah. I, did, I thought they were like scorching rays or something like that. Nope, okay. No, 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 no. Sounds good. All right, we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve points of damage as they thwack into you. And Dolner, you're up. Um. With that, I am going to rebuttal with a guiding bolt right up at her. All right. If you attack roll, please. All right. Would be a 15 to hit. That misses. Goes offside. Huh? It's a day of magic missiles. Is that the best you can do? Mine hits you. Yours just goes off wide. That's all I got. That's all you got. All right. Yep. Yaslin. Um, I'll use my action to move my moonbeam on top of him again. It's a full action to move it. Yeah, unfortunately. Right, you got it moved over top of him. And is that all? Yep. Alright. Jezrig. My lips are sealed. I'll just hit this guy with my rapier using booming blade. Because it doesn't okay. have verbal components. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh. AC of 14. Mm. That hits. Okay, so now it takes four points of damage. And that'll do it. Would you like to describe this? I'll just grab my rapier. You'll see some crackling energy around it. I'll lunge and just rip right through, skewer the creator. And I'll be really angry because I'm still with my mouth sewn shut. Mm hmm. Excellent. And is that all, sir? <clears throat> uh, no, I'll move 30 feet up. One, two, three, four, five. Just because, well, this one is blocked. And that's my turn. Alrighty. And Hilda is down. Top of the order. Any discussion? Yaslin, how, how much did that hurt going through there? Going through the vine? The thorns, yeah. The thorns? Um, a lot. I would not recommend. Now, wouldn't there be a better hole? I should have, like, call? a little gap in there. Because she got through. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, she pushed through, and then this magical wall of thorns reformed. Well, <laughs> it is. did the thunder wave that I make, like, create, like, an indent? A tiny and one. A little bit. And then nothing just material reform or it, it began blasting it away 
but you did a very small amount of damage to that section of the wall. No. Just All right. Well, you only die once. You could you could climb. Now, would that take do the same damage as going through it? Uh, maybe if I took my time up, I could. It, if I took my time up, could I? Would I take damage climbing it, or so? With the amount of thorns that are covering this, it's impossible to take no damage. If you were to go extremely slowly, then you probably have a better chance of getting through with less damage. Yeah, but that, by, by that time, everybody's dead. Okay. Oh, well, I got some extra hit points. It's fine. All right. And let's do it. <clears throat> All right. This guy down here is going to grow another spike in his mouth and spit it out at Dulner. Oh, that will miss you, Dulner. This one starts its turn in the moonbeam. Please roll damage for me. Thank you. Oh dear, I failed that. 13 damage. 13 damage. This thing gets fried. And blisters and charred residue cover its body as this thing is almost dead, but not quite. And it is going to jump over to another branch. And it's, oh no, no, hold on a second. This thing was, well, it was grappling you. Um, yeah. It's gonna it's gonna shift around to another part of your body then so that it's not in the moonbeam. And, you know, actually this thing is tiny. So it's, it's occupying your same space and it's on your body grappling you. Um, so if you want to put your moonbeam on it in the future, you would be in the moonbeam as well. It's a tiny creature. It's literally clinging to your body. And okay. then it is going to thrash about trying to deal damage to you. That is a miss. That's cocked. That will... What's your armor class as a direwolf? 14. 14. That will hit you for 6 piercing damage. And you'll also take another 2 piercing damage. Right. Grappling and clinging to you and rubbing its body against you. And if I after could... The, after the first damage, I revert back to my normal form. Okay. I'll swap you out. There we go. And so the whatever carried over will go to your normal form and then two damage as well from the second, uh, like the thrashing attack it did on you. And if I could get two constitution saving throws for maintaining your concentration, please. 15 for the first one and 19 for the second one. All right, you pass them just fine. And that creature is finished, Umlaut. Okay, if I move 10 feet back from the wall and do a running high jump, could I then start climbing up the rest of the way? From where you high jump? Yeah. Books. High jump move. <laughs> I figure that way I'm not taking damage from starting on ground level at least. Oh. I, I'm, I'm thinking like Zelda start jump up onto the cliff and start climbing instead of like starting from the bottom. Yeah, we gotta find the high jump rules. You probably you probably get like five feet or something, or maybe a little bit more. This is in the adventuring. Maybe page one eighty one. All right, high
high jump. When you make a leap, you can leap into the air three, three plus your strength modifier if you move at least 10 feet on the jump immediately before the jump. Okay, so what's your strength modifier? One. One. So you can get like four, feet. you get like four feet in the air. So we'll, we'll, call, it, air. we'll call it five feet. So okay. You, you can jump up five feet. And it's, uh, how tall was it? 20 feet. Better than nothing. Okay, so you, you go get a running start at this wall. So you have some momentum. You have some momentum yeah. carrying you forward as you slam into the wall to grab a hold of this thorny wall, right? You know what? Why not? <laughs> he's like, he's like, it. I think it through. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Still gonna, still gonna do it. All right. Thought it through. I know that, know that it's any way, any way I cut it, I'm taking damage, so. All right, give me, give me a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh, four, four, eight. Okay. Um, that is 14 points of piercing damage Ooh. as you slam into the wall. That hurt a lot. That, that hurt a lot. And now you're going to begin climbing? Yep. Okay. So, for every five feet you move, give me another dexterity saving throw. All right. First five feet. That's 19. All right. You will take one point of piercing damage. Okay. Hurts less, but still And hurts. you're now 10 feet off the ground. Keep climbing. Okay. Dexterity yep. save. I'm already here. Uh, 11. 11. Ooh. Three points of piercing damage. Okay. Okay. Still hurts, but I'm still alive. And you're so, now 15 feet off the ground. Right, Dexterity five save. Feet. I can see the top. Natural one. Oh, five. baby. Three piercing damage. Still Eight. alive. Um, now I need you to give me an athletics check for climbing. All right. Doing it. 18. All right, you successfully get to the top of the wall. You're now that on the top of the wall. That 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 hurt a lot. And you had 10 feet of movement, plus climbing is half speed, so you had to climb 15 feet to 30 feet. So you would have had to use a double move then to get to the top yeah. of the wall. So that that's my move plus action. Yeah, you would have used 30. You've used 40 feet total so far. Yeah. So you technically have some more movement if you want to do something else. Like you're, where on the wall so, did you climb up? Right, right in front of, uh, right there. Okay, so you're like perched right there on the wall, basically. Yep. Okay, so there are literally right to your northwest, there are tree branches sticking out because that tree is pretty tall. So you could probably use about five feet of movement to jump off of that wall and try to get into the tree branches. Going for it. All right. So you're now basically, I'm going to put you right here, but you're right above Yaslin, who's on the ground below you. Okay. Um, do I still have, uh, do I still have a bonus action at all or anything? You do. You have a bonus action. You used 45 feet of movement, so you technically have 15 feet of movement left and you have a bonus action. I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself. All right. Healing Word on myself. <laughs> I'm all so right. awesome. Excellent. And all of my little dragonfly guys are dead. So that's going to put it at Ravenous turn. Hmm. I see that you have escaped my little thorny wall. This is disappointing. Let us see what other cool things I have that I can do. Hmm. Oh, I've done that already. I've done that already. Hmm. <laughs> it's disappointing. Um, oh, she spread it out. <laughs> Dulner, how damaged do you look? 
up on a scale of what to 32? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at a be about 11. So you're looking pretty wounded. All right, cool. You're looking pretty wounded. You're a, a good th a th two thirds down. All right, you're a good target then. She up in the tree laughs and smiles, tosses you a wink, Dulner. I do believe this is your last moment on this earth. Do you um, have any is last? Is this a roll for me or no? No. Is this the magic missile again? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, okay. Do, Bring do, it you, on. do you have any last words, my dear dwarf? <laughs> I didn't think. Give, it, give me your best shots. Very well then. I'm going to roll all fours. Woo! Oh, well, that's a that's not bad. I rolled two fours out of three, so we're at 13 points of damage. I go down. Ooh, Dulner. Would you find a little skull symbol and put it on your mini? As oh, yeah, sure. Dulner collapses to the ground. I can't cutting words magic missile, can I? Because it's not a attack roll. That's correct. It's not an attack roll. That's correct. It's an auto hit. And... Ravenna from up in the tree smiles and looks herself over and says, Oh, look, I have a cut. You're doing so well. And Dulner's turn. Um, so I need you to make a death saving throw. Could you oh, se yes. select your token? And then up in the upper left hand corner, you will see a button that says death save. Click that and only you and I can see the result of that. Oh, cool. All right. And Yaslin, it is your turn. You are grappled by this little thorny guy who is clinging to you. I'm going to cast Healing Word on Dolnir. Aww. As a bonus <laughs> action. All right. And that will roll some damage or some healing for him, please. You get six healing. No, oh, that is and that is sad. And Dulner, as you regain consciousness, you suffer one level of exhaustion from a near death experience. Uh, there are little I have little markers too for your tokens. Exhaustions. Right there, one level of exhaustion. Okay. And Yaslin. And then for my action, I'm going to move my moonbeam over here on top of her. Ah, oh, That's not cool. <laughs> Sunk. I don't know. That'll be it for me. All right. Yezrig. I'll grab my dagger and start popping the stitches that are shutting my mouth closed. All right, you use your action to do that, and it deals one slashing damage to you. That hurts so much. And is that all? And I'll move to the to the next gate and wait here. Okay, I just want to turn. I, I just want to point out that you know, Umlaut gets wounded. Healing word. Dulner goes down, healing word. But when Hilda went down, nobody was healing her. <laughs> All right. Um, top of the round. Any discussion? I am. Com I am on empty. Get to Jessery. I have a, a potion, so if you oh, get that's me, true. right, I'm gonna take mine this round as my action, bonus action. I can healing word someone, so I should go up to full health. Health. I can healing word someone as a bonus action, just to get a little bit more for someone. Can you do anything else other than healing word? I don't have cure wounds. No, 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 no. Not, oh, not about, oh, yeah. I, I actually Offense. have a really good level one spell, um, but I can't use it. That's the only thing is my bonus action. 
Oh, okay. Because my spiritual weapon's gone because it got counterspelled. Got, and yeah. I used aid to bump everybody's up. Well, almost everybody's hit points up. Plus five. Um, so, but I do have something I think that's going to help. Maybe I'm hoping because she's a tree or whatever, I have burning hands, which is fire damage. Maybe she's vulnerable to it, but I don't know on that one yet. Yeah. We'll find out. Yeah, I, I, but I won't be able to do it this round. I mean, I'm I'm on empty on spells. Uh, it's all either thunderclap or bash you good with my mace, and that's it for me. And and by any chance, I'm not uh, that the DM is listening. But I'm sorry. By any chance, if uh, she does go before my round and she tries to take me out again, then just come over to me and take the potion. For yourself. Yeah, I've got to figure so, out how to get out from this tree first. Right. But, so, either way, but you don't want to take too long. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, my my little thorny stick guy right here. Oh, oh. <clears throat> Jeez. I mean, Dolner's my only good target. You're prone too, by the way. Oh, in the trick. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot a little thorn at you because I have no other good targets. That would be a disadvantage, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, it would, since you're prone. And there's a couple really good rolls, so that will hit you regardless. <laughs> Six piercing damage. Does that, dro does that drop you down again? I'm down. Oh, there we go. Put the skull on you, please. We're, we, the yo-yoing has begun. Yeah. And this one right here is going to thrash around on Yaslin. It is clinging to her. Ooh, that's a good roll. For six piercing damage. And then two piercing damage as it grapples you. And if I could please get two constitution saving throws for your concentration checks. The first one is 18 and then 18 again. Beautiful. No problem. Moonbeam. Nice. And. Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Um, that's a really good idea. All right, sorry, I got distracted. Um, Umlau, you're up. So, Yaslin is below me on the tree, right? That's correct. She's 15 feet below you. Okay. Like... She's on the ground. She's not on the tree. Right, right. I'm up in the tree. She's below me. Is there, can I like drop down with my mace onto the, 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 the creature that's technically yes, but the creature is tiny, right? And it's okay. clinging to Joslyn. So there's danger inherent with what you're thinking. Okay. So can I move 10 feet down and just swing at it from yes, the tree? Absolutely. All right. So let me do that and get it off of her so that she doesn't have to do concentration checks for her moonbeam anymore. Uh, that is 10 to hit. 10! Um, that does not hit. Okay. And Ravine. Hmm. <sighs> These things will never learn, I suppose. And she melds in. Oh, she's starting her turn in the moonbeam. Let's resolve that. Squeaky. All right. How much damage? 
Eleven. Eleven. She takes a little bit of damage from that. And then she melt. She melds into the tree and she reappears stepping out of this tree right next to Yaslin. And she looks at you and says, you're getting annoying. Let's Let's just try a little something, shall we? And then she launches herself at you, puts her shoulder into you, trying to push you to the south, into her wall of thorns. I need you to make either an athletics check or an acrobatics check to resist her shove. Did she make a constitution saving throw? Uh, uh, constitution oh. saving throw. Concentration. She did not let me do that. Sorry, not to. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> I'm all trying right. to save Yoslin. <laughs> Alright, I made my save, so her wall of Thors is still up. Damn it. <laughs> and then let me make my athletics check. Oh, her athletics is not good either. But this will be really cool if it works. And okay, I rolled a 15. What did you get? I got a 12. <sighs> Oh, baby. So that was a, an attack action? think I can, but I want to find out if I can cutting words it. What does cutting words say? Is it an attack? I can, it, it says anytime there's an attack roll, ability check, or damage roll. It is. Isn't that an ability it check? Ability check. It's either an ability check or an attack because I, I've got to ask. All right. So, can can I cutting words that? Uh, because cutting words is if I see it, it's a reaction within sixty feet. Uh, if somebody makes an attack roll, ability check, or damage roll, I can use bardic inspiration. Yep. To... Could, yeah. Go ahead. You can okay. Cut so words yeah, that. I'm gonna cutting words that right. and drop it by a d6. All right, roll that d6. Uh, which is a six. That will drop it just low enough. So as you- Shove off, baby. You call out and Yaslin is reinforced and bolstered as she stands her ground, is not shoved into the wall of thorns. Ravine is not happy. She looks up at you, Umlaut, and says, you're going to die. And Dulner, you're up. Oh, actually, Dulner, you're down. Uh, give me a death save, please. Oh. Well done. Yaslin. I'm going to bonus action wild shape again back into the dire wolf. Okay. Oops, that was the wrong one. Excellent. And then I'm going to try to bite the small creature that's on me. All right. Do I get pack tactics with uh, Om Omlot being he's, close to me? He's 15 feet up in the air. In the tree. Dang it. 
No, I moved yeah. down 10 feet to oh, try you... to swing. So oh, I'm, that's right. I'm within five feet okay. of the, the creature. Yep, yep, yep. That's right. I remember now. So yes, you have pack tactics. Does 19 hit? It does. And then... 11 piercing damage. Would you like to describe this? I want to grab it off of me and shake it aggressively and throw him. All right. You toss its broken, spindly body to the ground. That thing was sitting at one hit point for like two or three <laughs> rounds. <laughs> all right. Well done. And you're no longer grappled. Are uh, you all set? Yeah, that will be it for my turn. All right. And yes, Rig. I'll finish popping the stitches from my mouth. All right, one hit point of damage, and you are now your mouth is now free, and you can talk and cast verbal components again. <clears throat> Yay, Bane! And I'll just run here, the side stone, or. And that's my round. Beautiful. Hilda is down, and nobody is <coughs> trying to heal her. Top of the round, any discussion? Does, let's does let's have just something? one more round. Well, does anyone have something that can knock her out of the tree? Like, she keeps bopping from tree to tree. I wonder if we knock her out of the tree if she either gets weaker or is just easier to to kill at that point if she's not in a tree. She's on the ground right now because she tried to shove me. Yeah. Oh, she is? Yep. She is. Okay. Well, there goes that plan. The plan is not dying. I got no control yep. on that one. <laughs> I believe in you. Let's go. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, this guy right here sees a nice target across the way in Yezrig. He sees four targets. Yes. Would you please roll and see what you get for the mirror image? 14. All right. And it's going to hit a mirror image, I take it. Yeah. My attack roll is really bad, so I miss everybody completely. Oh, wait, what is the DC for the mirror image? 13. I might. No, I didn't. I didn't hit. All right, so nothing happens there. And Umlau, you're up. Uh, I'm just going to start swinging at the uh, at Thorn. All right. Uh, 10. 10? That misses. <laughs> but the best you can do. I'm still trying. I'm still learning. Don't worry. And it's her turn now. <sighs> Ridiculous. And she is... Stepping into the tree, she is not disengaging, so she is going to be... Oh, crap, that would actually be... Hold on a second. Let me rethink that. That's probably not a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> great idea. Nope. Definitely do it. <laughs> Go with your first instinct. <laughs> nope. Um... All right, casting spell, and we're going to direct this up at Umlaut as three magical darts fly up at you. Come on, high numbers, baby. Woo! Oh, baby, that's nice. Don't need high numbers. 12 points of damage. I'm out. And... He drops to zero and goes prone and limp and falls 10 feet out of the tree, hits the ground for an immediate failure. 
That was umlaut. One of his arms is bent at a weird angle behind his body. And would you find the little skull indicator, please, and put it on your token? I'm going to mark you as prone. And Dolner, you're prone, too. Could you put the prone indicator on your yeah, token? I was, I was trying to find it. I didn't see it. Okay. It's a little, it's like a guy sleeping with the green underneath him type yeah, of thing. It's really small. Yeah. I got it. And that was, we just knocked you out. Oh, that was my magic missile. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Hmm. She looks around. This is going just well. And Dolner, your turn. Would you make your death save, please? Alrighty. Yaslin, your turn. I'm gonna try to bite her. Okay. Does 18 hit? It does. Okay, she needs to make a strain saving throw, DC 13, or be knocked prone. And 11 piercing damage. She takes a bunch of damage. She managed to stand her feet, though. And, and her concentration. Yep, I'm gonna do that right now. <gasps> she loses her concentration. And the Wall of Thorns disappears. That is not very nice. I'm just going to have to do this the old fashioned way. Beat you with a big stick. <clears throat> All right. Anything else, Gazlin? I'm going to move to the side of her. Okay. And that's it. Yazra, you're up. I'll grab that nasty green vial and shove it on Donor's mouth, and I'll shout, WAKE UP! All right, <laughs> superior healing potion. Yeah, it is... Um, That's the... 8d4 plus 8. Yeah. So let me... I'm just going to roll it in. Okay. Um, roll 20. Does it go up to 8? Oh, you can just type it in. Oh, can you? Yeah, can just... Type that in. Roll... 8d4 plus 8, like that. You're welcome to roll it yourself, because I probably rolled really crappy for you, but that's how you would do it. <laughs> just forward slash. Oh, so you, put that, you put that right in your chat? Yeah, yeah, you just, you type in. Okay, sorry about this. One. Forward slash roll, and then 8d4 plus 8. Like that, only don't put the hyphen and space in front of yep, it. Yep, sounds good. Thank you. Oh, I took exactly what you said. Tell me to slow everything down. There we go. All right, there you go. 29 points of healing then. And you now have two levels of exhaustion as the yo-yoing comes full swing. Yep. And you're no longer you dying. Two. So now you have disadvantage on ability checks, I believe, and also your movement is now halved. Correct. Yeah. And the third level of exhaustion is when things really get interesting. It becomes uh, a death spiral. Well, oh, that's, yeah, that's... But a, if we get to that point, I have a feeling we're um, pretty in trouble. So. All right. And that was Jezrig. Hilda's down yeah. on the ground. And top of the round, any discussion? Same plan. Don't die. <laughs> I like that plan. All right. Let's execute that plan. Hmm. This spiny creature down here sees Jezrig doing these shenanigans and shoots a little barb at him. Oh, would you roll to see who I, I get? Six. So, who does it hit then? Uh, eight, three, uh, nine, six. 
It's not a duplicate, it must roll six or higher, so it hits one of my duplicates. Duplicates? All right. Yeah. And I definitely hit one of them, so one of your duplicates winks out. Okay. Oh, uh, got it. Excellent. And Umlau, you're up. Oh, no, Umlau, make your death saving throw, please. There we go. Wee. Ooh. What do we say to the god of death? Not today. And her. Who's that? Umlau? Now it's her turn. Yeah. Hmm. This is rather annoying. They go down, they get back up, they go down, they get back up. She looks at you, Yezrig, and begins casting a spell. And then your mirror images wink out. That's rude. <laughs> and she's going to step right there. And Dulner, you are prone. All right, bonus action. Uh, I am going to cast Healing Word on Elmot. Um, and then, since I just cast a spell, I'm going to, um, uh, I have to use half my movement to get up, correct? Yes. And then, which, then I use half my movement to move. Can I move five feet still? Mm hmm All right. So that's, I think that's all my movement since I'm exhausted level two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, so then I'll take... What's that? Go ahead. Uh, roll the. We need to roll the healing for Umlau. Oh, do you want to roll it, Umlau? Do you want me to roll it? <laughs> All right, so, what is it? Uh, 1d4 plus. It's three. Uh, big money. A 4 plus 3, so 7. There we go. Whew. Back among the living. For now. And that was Dulner. Yaslin, you're up. No, I, was, I still have an action. Oh, okay. And my action was to have my crossbow out and just take a shot. Okay. Actually, within... Yeah, crossbow. The 11 plus 3, so 14. That misses. Yaslin. So, wide left. I'm going to try to bite her again. All right, and you now have advantage for pack tactics. 23. Yes. And she needs to make another strength saving throw, DC oh. 13. Woo, I made it. And 11 piercing damage. Owie. She's starting to take more wounds. Not quite lightly wounded yet, but she's getting there. And that'll be it for my turn. All right. Hilda's down on the ground, not moving. I think you skipped me. Did I skip you? Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll let you go. Go ahead. Yes, Rick. I'll just throw a pink Eldritch Blast at her. Okay. Um. Nope. Never mind. Totally misses her. <laughs> you see, that's why I skipped you. I was like, you know, he's not going to do anything anyway. <laughs> Never mind. All right. This guy down here is going to shoot a barb out of its mouth at Yesrig. Let's see you avoid this, wizard. And I rolled a two, so it'll go wide. Because I'm not a wizard. No. Oh. <laughs> Umlau, you are prone. What would you like to do? Can't hear you. You're muted. You're on mute. Burp. Um, do I need to get up just to cast Thunderclap at her? I don't think so. No, it's just somatic, so I just yell or mm -hmm. point at her menacingly. All so right. Yeah, I'll, I'll cast Thunderclap. 
uh, three points of damage. Is this like a saving throw? What do I got going on here? Uh, Constitution 12 saving throw. All right. Wee. Oh, there we go. I saved. Was this a cantrip? Uh, yeah. So no damage. Nope. All right. Um, half my movement to get up. Correct. All right. So then I just kind of stand up. All right. Remove that little marker from your token, please. Yep. And Ravine. Hmm. She is going to disengage and then step into a tree. She will reappear up in the branches of this tree here. And she will call down to you. <clears throat> I believe we've perhaps been a little hasty. Um, I'm willing to negotiate a truce if you're so inclined. And I'll leave that there for people to consider on their turns. Um, Dolner. Umlaut. No, not wait. Dolner, you're up. Dolner is going to turn. And. That's going to be good. Alright, Dolner's going to turn. I think it's 15 feet, right? Let me just check real quick. Yep, perfect. All right. I'm going to turn and cast Burning Hands. And right at... As long as I'm within 15 feet. The Tree Lady. Oh. So what that is, is a Dex 13 save. Okay. Well, I made my save. All right. So that's 3d6... <clears throat> Oh, horrible rolls. Uh, seven points of damage. Yeesh. All right. She gets crisped up a little bit, and she's now looking lightly wounded. I told you I would negotiate a truce, and this is how you treat me? And then, um, Delnor is going to move 15 feet, actually 10 feet to Elmat, and then hand, can I hand him um my potion that i had yeah with your like free interaction with the environment thing yes. yeah free interaction so i'm gonna mm -hmm. hand you the potion so now right it's yours yeah excellent yaslin you're up for my action i'll move my moonbeam on top of her that tree I don't think you realize what a truce is. I'm a wolf. I can't talk. And I'll all in my turn there. All right. And yes, Rick. Can't hear you, buddy. You're muted. You're on mute, buddy. If she wants to negotiate, I'll use my charisma to cast Eldritch Blast. Or AC of 19. That hits. 13 damage. 13 damage. She's now looking moderately wounded. Ah! Lady, you're weak. Poor Hilda. All right. This guy right here little thorny guy looks to his mistress and then begins skittering away running along the tree branches jumps out of the tree branches to the garden wall and then makes off Ravene looks after him <sighs> selfish little creatures loyalty none and Umlau, you're up. So taking the potion, is that a free action? And then I still have my action to attack, or is that... A bonus action to it? drink a potion. 
All right, so gonna drink the potion. Uh, ooh, that's a lot. Hey. And then, uh, how far away am I from her? Twenty-five feet. Twenty-five feet. Uh, I, I forget. Level, first level of exhaustion. Do I still keep my movement speed or yeah? No? It's the okay. ability score is disadvantage. Got it. Uh, yeah, checks. I'm gonna walk up to her and start whacking. She, she away is up my... in the tree though. She's like fifteen oh. feet up in the tree. Fifteen feet in the tree. Thunderclap again. Okay. What's uh, the what's the constitution range? save? What's well, the range on that? Uh, thunderclap. Ooh, no, five feet. Never mind. That is way too. I have nothing I can do. Mock. No, I have vicious. I have nothing. Literal nothing. Well, it's vicious mockery. You can't trip for me. Don't have it. Oh, I thought you did. Yeah, I have nothing I can do, literally. Okay. I just dodge or something, I'm then? Just, I'm just going to move. I'm going to move up to her and uh, dodge action. Okay. Just in case she attacks. All right. And... Jeez. <clears throat> All right. She's going to tree step beam. over to there. Oh crap, the Indeed. stupid moonbeam. <laughs> roll damage, please. Oh, uh, that's a bad roll. 12 radiant damage. <sighs> she is very heavily wounded. She snarls, steps into the tree, reappears at the base of this tree right here opens the gate and starts running away full tilt every so often jumping into a tree reappearing into another tree all right now as she's trying to escape are you guys going to pursue uh, i can cast if she's less than 120 feet from us at this point from to, till our turn because I'm right after her. So is she more than 120 feet? Finish your sentence. If what? Oh, I, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt if she's still in range. Okay. So if, if you guys are going to try to pursue her down, then I'm going to move this to a skill challenge to resolve the rest of this. I think we should hunt her down. <laughs> she doesn't run unless she's scared. So I think we should hunt her down. Okay. This Stop this, guys. It's Hunter. Let's give it a shot. Why not? Okay. Yep. All right. So the DC of this skill challenge is going to be a 13. And the way this works is you basically, you guys need to get five successes before you get three failures. Okay. So, and... We'll basically just go in turn order, starting at the beginning, and you declare a skill that you would like to use to try to stop her. So you could say, uh, athletics, I'm going to run really fast, or something like that. You can't use spells, you can't use attacks and stuff like that. It has to be a skill, and then you justify your usage of the skill. Once you have used a certain skill, like athletics, for instance, you can never use it again. And in the same round, nobody can use the same skill twice. All right, start with Umlaut. What would you like to do? So I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to lie and try to persuade her that we have reconsidered uh, having a truce. So I'm going to try to persuade. Okay, roll that, Just please. Just yell. Okay, roll it. Uh, that is 16. All right, that is one success. 
and Dulner. Dulner is going to use his perception to try and find the best route to catch her. Like, if she's veering off this way or that way, to get a more straight line path. Okay, go ahead. Oh, a 10. Eww. First failure. So she started when all Umal, Umal called out. She looked behind and started to reconsider, started to slow down just a little bit. And then as she saw Dulner calculating how to cut her off, she wisened up and then jumped through another tree to get away. And Yaslin. I'm going to use acrobatics to try and like, run after her as fast as I can. Okay, in your wolf form? Okay, go yes. ahead. 17, 19. Alright, that's a success. As the group begins to close on the fleeing thorn, Yezrig. I'll double down on Unglum's strategy. I'll open my arms and say... We're not trying to harm you. Let's sit and negotiate and use deception to convince her. Okay, go ahead. 19. Excellent. She is now, against her better judgment, slowing down and reconsidering her route. And now we're at the top again. Umlaut. So, just to recap, it's skills that I have not used or the entire group? You have not used. Okay. Uh, seeing that she's kind of starting to believe what a few of us have said, I'm going to uh, use athletics and try to kind of sprint out to her. Okay, go ahead. Please be good. Please be good. 18. All right. The group has nearly caught up with her. Between convincing her to slow down and reconsider her surrender and just beating it as hard as you can after her, you've nearly caught her. It turns to Dulner. Dulner <laughs> is going to use insight to try and understand where she is going to go. Okay. I'm trying to cut her off or whatnot. Cut, yep. Yep, go ahead. A 14 plus 5, so a 19. Excellent. And you guys have managed to slow her down and cut her off. You have now apprehended the thorn. You have her in your grasp. Tie her up. Do what you will with her. Um, and what would you like to do with her now that she is at your mercy? Try and remember uh, from the uh, from the marshal. Did the marshal want her alive or no? Well, let's take her to the marshal, and they'll decide what to do. I'm perfectly fine with that. All right. So you guys take the thorn back to Marshal Iron Sky. Ooh takes the creature into her custody and bids you relax, recover from your adventures, and she'll meet you on the next day. And when she does, and you guys feel a little bit better, she tells you that they interrogated the thorn and learned that there is a greater scheme at work. There is somebody called the Sovereign who has been unleashed upon the region to exact a sort of vengeance because of something that <clears throat> the Oathbreakers of Windvale failed to appeal, uphold, some promise that they did not follow through with. However, the problem has not been solved. This wasteland that is spreading, this vitality that is being leached out, is caused by these crystals that are growing near the tower. And they're not just near the tower. They're all over. They found more of these crystals. 
it appears that these crystals are creating a coterminous location with the Feywild. The boundary between the Feywild and the Material Plane is thinning, and life is leaching out of this region and into the Feywild, weakening Windvale and strengthening the domain of the Sovereign. And they have heard that nearby there is another creature at work. Something fell is at work on the Beast Bog River, and an aqueduct has been fouled, cutting off the life-giving water to the town, without which all shall fall. And so Marshal Iron Sky turns to you and asks that you go and investigate this problem as well. However, that's not this adventure. <laughs> that is that is next month's adventure for another group of patrons that will play that through. So, but congratulations, you have apprehended the thorn and completed your objective. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> we didn't die. It was close. We didn't die. Plan worked. It was so close so many times. <laughs> you had you had a bunch of easy fights and then that last one was the tough one. That was that was my plan to try to get you through most of the adventure as quickly as possible was to have easy fights that would be quick, right? Um, and then the last one, of course, has to be a tough one. But... All right, I'm going to end the live stream there then, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. And I'm going to get this up and then we're going to push some buttons. Wee!